we are back hello everyone welcome back to my channel my name is Brittany simon and we are back with the podcast i'm very excited to come back you guys know i've been struggling with my lupus diagnosis and it's just been a pain but i'm working with a nutritionist and my doctors and everything is looking good i'm a little tired but that's okay in today's video or today's podcast, we are sponsored by High Priestess, which you know is the only company that I work with for a multitude of reasons, but mostly because I know Leela and Leela runs an amazing company. She's an amazing person. She runs an amazing business course that I take. So I am, you know, a big fan of her, obviously. And it actually is like beautiful that I work with her because she has seen me cry so many times over the accusations that I'm going to cover in today's podcast. I have been accused by the interwebs of being a possible cult leader. And this comes really from Max, Mr. Girl, who's a content creator here in this um, platform. You guys should check him out if you want to. He's a very unique personality type. I was introduced to his work through my friend Destiny, aka Steven, and we're all people who like kind of live in the same part of the internet, right? One thing, you know, led to another and we ended up collabing and I reached out and obviously, this is how the world works. We create content, we have work, we have businesses, and over time networking occurs and sometimes people throw accusations at you that are so outrageous, it makes you cry. Like I wanna be, you know, I wanna actually do good with my work. So yeah, I can see the issues. And I do my best, but people are going to people max. I can't live my life and limit myself and how I can impact my community because a few people might not interact with me in the way that quote unquote saves them, which I never promised in the first place. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that you're building an unethical cult empire around yourself. I'm saying you, it's almost unavoidable when you're an online figure, but you do your best through the process to communicate clearly with your viewers. I don't think it is unavoidable. Well, I think I think you can balance it. I think you can remind people, look, I think it's beautiful and like poetic when a person comes to me and they go, I really are, feel connected. Wait, they go, I really feel connected to you. Like, I feel like you see me and I have to be like, oh, take me off that pedestal and that parasocial relationship. Right. I'm just a person. Right. So the moment you no, you're but you're not. But your whole your whole philosophy is based on the idea that you are a level five so you're not but just i wasn't when i even wrote it i wasn't even a five when i wrote it like that's the point every it's cult like, leader every cult leader starts the story with i started out just like you i am still like everybody all every cult leader says that too well then I, that's what i'm trying to say like you're right no matter how you look at it but what i know was is really happening is i know it's not happening it just looks like it's happening that way but it's not what if you're wrong um, that'd be really sad, but I don't think so. I think I'm very transparent and that helps me feel very confident that I'm not running a super cult. Um, if I, d I don't think so. Maybe. Well then I don't. You're like my worst nightmare of what I'm going to turn into. <laughs> why i ha why people are cool I, and they're awesome I don't, I, I don't want to be a cult leader rationalizing you say that but you are people. you say that but you're destiny's largest disciple like you're his biggest fan you know what i'm saying like i believe you but i'm saying if you were where i was you would be able i don't to think i'm how, how am i why do you think i'm destiny's biggest fan the you tr you treat him like he's your cult leader Versus no, like, yeah, I, no, no, yeah, no, no, yeah, no. You do. Yeah, you do. You gave him, you, somebody said something to you the other day. What was it? Something like, I would never talk shit on Destiny or I would never betray him. He's given me everything. He gave you a moment on the internet. It's hardly everything. He gave you a second on the internet, which is just like what happens on his channel. You give him a lot of credit for your career, but you are also the thing that makes people stay. I know that. Oh, I give myself plenty of credit for my career. I'm, I, I'm a big fan of my work. Okay. But um, me being extremely grateful to Destiny mm -hmm. for launching my career mm -hmm. is different from me being his biggest fan or being a, like a a disciple. Maybe your language is. I just I, I I think I I openly disagree with a lot of things he says. My viewers openly disagree with my levels. They make videos about it. They criticize me constantly. Um, yeah, but I'm not, uh, I'm not like his viewer. 
What do you mean? You're not Destiny's I mean, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not, um, <sighs> you're not repeatedly giving your viewers like airtime on your extremely widely watched stream. And it's not just that he's They've giving me airtime. People have been on before. What do you mean? I've done streams with viewers and Discord people. They know. Okay, so then I think I think it makes sense for those people to be more grateful to you. I'm just saying that I don't I don't see my relationship with Steven as like a fan uh, creator right, relationship. Right, but I also don't see the viewer the relationship I have with my fans as a cult. But I'm saying from the outside, that's what it looks like. Well, even from the inside, definitionally, I think that is what it is. Like it has all the hallmarks. It literally of the doesn't. Cult. They have the right to come and go. It's their money. I don't decide if they're here. They decide if they're here. I don't even know if they. That's leave. how cults work. That's, That's how, how if religions cults work. work. It's the difference between a religion and a cult is usually your ability to live without it. They can live without my channel. I'm just a YouTuber. They should most certainly leave and go live their life one day and never think about me. Why would they spend their life no, thinking about some random YouTuber? No, the difference between a religion and a cult. <laughs> is that a cult is around a person pretending it's around an idea yeah but i mean i could YouTuber. be a, i can be a christian but, but like jesus doesn't know that i became a christian no no person no person like individually needs me to become christian if i become christian that's why it's a religion it's just like a belief system i can buy into and i know you're presenting yours that way but you're also a person yeah, I'm a YouTuber. So like, of course, my audience is going to come to talk to me specifically. That's the point is that I am the thing they are talking to. And when I die, yeah, but you're telling them you have all the answers. No, I'm telling them I have specific answers for specific brains that help me on my you're literally saying you literally describe level fives as being like having reached this state of act self actualization and peace and harmony. The, the highest state that it is possible to reach. Well, okay. So I don't believe in the way that the gurus have like explained like peace and happiness and balance with life. I I'm think talking, it's- I'm talking about your own words. Right. So when I say these things, what I'm offering people is a better, more foundational understanding of themselves in relation to existence. People feel like they're in chaos. I felt like that. I was depressed, suicidal, all these yes, things. No, 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 no. Oh my God. This so, is- just yes. You're not from engaging your with anything I'm no, 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 I feel like we're having a great conversation. What do you mean? This is great. I don't think we are. Why? I don't What's think wrong? you're responding to what I'm saying. Well, I'm trying to get there, but I feel like you have to understand how my brain works because you're categorizing me like I'm like a guru or something. Like I think I'm this big a deal. I just think I'm a human who shits like everyone else and I figured out a specific you're way to exist. You're word for word. You're going down the cult leader playlist. Right, I know word that. word for word. Every Max, single, okay. nothing I say will be good enough for you because you've already decided it's culty. Because if you knew what a cult was, yes. you know I wasn't a cult. Habibi, have you never seen documentaries on cults? I'm way too lazy to be a cult leader. Come on. So all so all we're doing now is seeing how much of this you're willing to own, and the answer is none. Well, I don't want to misunder I don't want to misconstrue what I'm doing. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this off because I can't let you, Brittany, get off the hook with this fucking bullshit. I can't. Okay. Well, then why it, don't you just argue with her instead of trying to get Lav to do it for you? Dan is just well, here to shit stir, guys. Just yeah, to be clear, so you are, Dan Why? is literally just here to cause trouble. So if you're looking at him for life guidance or if you're getting upset with something, Dan <laughs> doesn't true. care. I'm going to go shit eating grin. Dan doesn't care about anybody in this conversation. Maybe me, hopefully. And then himself and the content. I'm trying no, to gauge how much value this has to me also. Like, do I need to change her mind or can I just simply no, just like really not fuck with Brittany? No, watch and learn. Okay, is all I'm going to say. Okay, I mean, now, first of all, yeah, but Dan, I am, Dan, 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 you're doing You're going to interrupt me? Uh -uh. Yes, I'm going to interrupt you. No, you'll motherfucker. You'll rush of passion, you just rush of in, in, in righteous anger, and yes. then the second you're challenged on it, you're like, oh, no, I'm just shit stirring. I'm just here to fuck around. Oh, I'm no, I'm oh, no. Oh, my God, he's like Britney. He's like Britney. Yeah, it's, not, it's the same oh. thing. Dan, Brittany's I knew doing. you hated me for a reason. It's because I am you. <laughs> Isn't that more like what Lav is doing, though? Like, the issue that Lav often has is that she comes in super, super, super hot because she, like, feels some sort of way, and then when she starts testing her ideas, she's like, oh, maybe, like, maybe I don't feel quite the way that I thought I originally I thought. I so then there's like, 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 like
because she gets really emotional and then she calms down and then she forgets why she was emotional in the first place which is it, she, no, she mistakes her emotions true. for it's like values I, and beliefs first of all no but once Dan, I what Dan and Brittany are doing is different they because they are actually strategically pulling away oh from into an unassailable position I miscalculated I how much Mr. Girl hates I think if you equate Brittany and Dan you are you are missing both of them I'm gonna be honest like Brittany is not doing what Dan's doing they have the same style of making a very strong stance and then once it's attacked they say well some no i did this isn't me i didn't say that or i don't believe that i'm not no i'm not an authority source i'm just here to i'm just joking around tee -hee, i'm just dancing no Dan i can do makes better himself a drink and britney starts fucking with her hair max, and dancing around i'm not gonna you're drink the reason, max you're the reason why britney is winning this conversation right now. yeah you are you are helping the enemy unironically wait hold no, on no, real no, quick guys, we're, all, we're gonna all talk okay. i literally yeah, fight go. like i'm look i'm telling you right now i'm i was at a crossroads with this like do i want to be like grant cardone no he's a scam artist i don't want to be they, what's his name? Like I don't know any of these guys. I want to be these fucking okay. like entrepreneurs. Listen so to me. So I want to make the. Meta I'm just sharing this my is life. The this is the moment. Pay, this people is the, pay for this my time. Where I think, no, this is like the anti-sex work this is argument. The moment you where guys I think, think people are bad because you have bad experiences or you see the world is bad. Yes, it is bad. I am trying my best. This, I am not a bad person. This is when do you not are project your, your insecurities most, onto me. This is the most unethical when part of no, what no, you do. No, no, no. Listen to me. You're telling me that I don't have agency. You don't believe in bodily autonomy. You want someone to control me. You think I'm mentally ill. I know. I'm borderline. I get it. I've already read all the threads on Reddit. I get it. It's fucked up, and you okay. know it, Max. Okay. And you know it. I would like to. Res I would like to respond. I Go think ahead. this is the moment that I was talking about, where where I what I think is the most unethical part of what you do. When people try to, in good faith, hold you accountable for your it's actions. It's not good faith. You just don't see me. And you just see me as a crazy person, which is just what everyone when else people sees try me to as. Hold you accountable when people, my therapist, except my Steven, friends that see Steven, me. Why doesn't Stephen think, Steven think is, I'm insane? Does Kyla think I'm insane? Think, if so, then I'm under an illusion. Maybe I am. I think Steven is in good faith questioning your um what, what about is my right, parents? I hold a job. I pay taxes. What is wrong with what's me? What's going on? I, I Wait, think, what's I think going Steven, on? Laugh, really. don't laugh. Shut up. I know it's very distracting, but you got to keep your eye on the fucking ball. I think <laughs> no, Steven is in Max, good faith. Like laugh, harmful. shut the fuck up. Shut up. Steven, I think Chill in good faith you're asking questions about, I think you're asking questions about life coaching in good faith. In response, <laughs> Brittany, you're saying, oh, I'm not a life coach. And is that moment where you're unwilling to have a conversation where you even answer a question about the morality or ethics of what you do that is you at your most okay. unethical and and the playbook always comes out that you bring up no no wait stop. can we eject the meta conversation let's wait, wait, wait. let's just reframe wait, let's, it so that you're the she did, wait, wait, wait. Single time. she did that wait she did, i agree she did that but let's just eject yes. the meta conversation just pursue the line of questioning okay just do that instead of having the meta framing of like this is what you're doing just so here's a question Brittany. do you think that it's reasonable that somebody could view your services as that of a life coach if i go to yes. buy your patreon i'm looking for life coaching essentially right yeah, and so I call okay. it mentorship, and I tell them, hey, sure. what I do here is, like, I just share my life. I chill with you, bro. I'm not a professional. Mm -hmm. I'm a college dropout. I hope sure, this Sure, but the help. goal is people are ultimately, like, trying to buy guidance from you. No, because they feel that's like the problem. That's the misconception. It's whatever the caller wants. I'm not here to talk about it. I've been talking to people for years that watch anime with me, that, like, literally never sure, talk about Sure, hold on. I understand. Diversion. No. Don't care. Wait, no, wait, no, no, hold no, no, no. It's I don't... not a diversion. How people handle it. You know, it's it. diversion because because with the that's why we negotiate. With... We talk about consent. I say, "How's your mental health?" I send you to the professionals. I'm just a person. Mm -hmm. The only thing they can come to me for is a whiteboard. I am just a mirror. Sure. So they tell me their thoughts. I problem solve like a puzzle because I like puzzles, and then I give it back gotcha. to them. I say, "When, oh, when that somebody help comes you? to when somebody yeah." So what you're describing right there could if be seen as. It. Sure, is a form of life coaching, right? If I come to you I, and I, I say like, I because life coaching lives in a bubble where people are like this, and they're like selling you, a, I'm an expert. How can you be an expert in life? I'm not an expert in life. I only know my life. I'm an expert in Britney's life, and I'm using Britney's tools to with the world if it helps them, and if it doesn't, totally get it. I'm so sorry. I wish you the best. Most of the time, if people get blocked, they get refunded, right? I'm really okay. courteous. I understand. I understand. I, I understand what best. you're saying. I understand no. what you're saying. No, you don't. You're but not most seeing life I, I do. I know. No, you're, you're not describing. saying. I understand That's what fine. you're saying. But That's the, fine. No, no, wait. Just like sex work is different everywhere. Just like no, no, no. We're not talking about sex work. Hold on. No, no, this no, but is you so are. Crystal. You're just. You're. I agree. I'm in a subset of. But I'm not as important as you're making me sound. I'm just a no, person. No, no one is trying to make you Chilling. sound important. Okay, you just you, you have a much narrower definition of life coach than I think what a lot uh, of people would have. Because like I think there no, are a lot of people yeah. that would say that like, oh, like a life coach could be a dude that you know goes with you and walks to the park and helps you feed ducks to find happiness. So okay. some people might say like, oh, that's, that's like a fine. form of life coaching. If you want to sure. call me life coach, I'm okay with it. It's just not how I okay. see myself. But you, so yeah, but you don't sell like you don't I sell like. You, a, I think you said wait, people come to you as puzzles and then you solve them. Stop. If sure. that's what they want, some people just watch anime with me. Some people never talk about the levels. Some people just like want to play games with me. I don't get it.
They just want yeah, to give to them. We're not, we're not, we're not talking about the other people. We're talking about the people that are coming to you for some sort of guidance. That it's fair okay. to say that there's like a form yes, of life coaching. I am a now, mentor. you're not selling like a heart. Yeah, okay. I like sure. that word okay. better. Isn't that a better word? I like it better. You can use it as a word, but, it's, but it, to people but like Mr. Norris, you're saying evasive when you but say that. Erica, right? yeah. I agree. I'm okay with this. Can we agree to live and let live or no? Do I have to be holden to someone else's ethics when I'm just a I'm person? just saying for yeah, I'm just saying for when you're engaging with Max in his bubble, especially, it's going to be more helpful if you identify as a life coach and just bite that bullet. Okay, that's fine. But you're asking me to divert my reality into his so we can talk correct uh, yeah yeah that's okay. what we have to do when we talk to different people we Max, have to make a real yes you can call right me now. a life coach i agree okay what's okay. the issue okay the issue is that when people try to hold you accountable mm -hmm. about your ethical the ethics of your behavior you are extremely resistant and evasive and it is takes forever to get you to answer a question or even acknowledge that you're doing what you're doing and i think mm -hmm. that is uh, one of the most unethical parts of what you do. I know, but I don't know what the issue is because I'm following my values. So what's the problem? The problem is that you don't take responsibility for anything you okay, do. Okay, wait, hold on. Tell her something she doesn't take responsibility. Instead of having the meta level conversation telling her what she does, just okay. point out a particular thing that you don't think she takes responsibility for. And then go, yeah. Okay, so uh, in the conversation with Lav, mm -hmm. you're modeling for us how you would get to know her and then help her with whatever is wrong with her life. Mm hmm if you are taking that position of authority, I think it's irresponsible for you. I mean, the, the meta conversation is the conversation. The problem is that, we, that it's irresponsible for there to be no recourse for anybody that you harm in the course of doing this. And I think you're probably likely attracting a very vulnerable population. I just disagree. I have definitely had a lot of ups and downs with this accusation. My siblings have had to deal with me ranting at them about how I feel about it. I understand conscientiously, like macro, what's happening, humans are gonna human, but on the micro, I'm hurt. And I know that my audience has faith in me and I really love that about them, but they have questions. So I have screenshotted a bunch of comments and questions that I got from you guys. I asked you guys for questions and we're just gonna go through them and we're gonna, I'm gonna try to be as honest and transparent as I can. If you have any follow-up questions, leave them down in the sections below and I'll probably cover them in a live show or maybe another video. With that said, thanks to High Priestess, I have my, okay, I have my candle in my box here, but I have a tea from them as well. So I wanna share that before we totally jump in. This is Faye tea. The whole theme of the box this month is like Faye and Fairy. And you guys know I love Laurel K. Hamilton, who's a New York Times bestseller, who's poly and BDSM and very amazing. And her writing, though up and down, is always consistently interesting. And she has a Faye series called the Mary Gentry series. And so I'm very much a big fan. Like, I'm a big fan. This tea has chamomile, jasmine flowers, red rose petals, and con... Okay. Cal okay, hello. Calendula flowers? Yummy, yummy, yummy. I've already had some, I'm not gonna lie. And so I have my little teapot here. Can we see how cute it is today? Okay, how cute it is today. Let's not spill Brittany. Knowing me, I will. Delish, totally want more. What am I doing? I didn't even pour it all the way up to the top. What am I thinking? Okay, let's put this down here. Let's start with the first question. This is gonna very be a very like laid back podcast because you guys know like this is stressful. Dealing with accusations like this is just stressful, especially when you know that you spend all of your time just hanging out with your family and like enjoying weed and just trying to get better. <laughs> like, this is just like a, such a weird conversation to even be having, but I'm more than happy to have it with you guys. Um, okay, so the first question, and I'm not gonna read your usernames or your names out loud. I just feel like it's really like, it's not always good. And I just don't wanna like dox people or I'm not attacking anyone. And all your questions are good questions. So here we go. Um, first question, I thought it was interesting in your conversation with Lav when you briefly mentioned your business model, finding a brand, being the levels, etc. And Lav is a content creator that I also collabed with and recently had a uh, controversial like panel when it was like 3v1 and like her and Mr. Girl were coming at me. Lav and I cleared ourselves up. We had a conversation woman to woman and we seem fine now. Mr. Girl on the other hand, if you're watching this, hi Max. No like hard feelings, but your accusations are out of the realm of reality, and so they're a little concerning. So I understand that, but that's who Lav is, in case you guys are new to my work. So I have a couple of questions, they say. 
Is the level system something you hope to, for the lack of a better word, capitalize on in your future? If so, as a creative, how does that change the way you interact with your work? So the levels are an observational philosophy that I created with a co-author who likes to remain anonymous. I've made tons of podcasts on this, like 60 plus. I've made so many videos, individual like videos on what level people could be. I've even made friends over time. Like I did a review on Sneeko, the content creator who I said was a perfect four. Now I would say he's like a three on the way to four, but either way, him and I have now connected and become friends. And I'm so excited that he was open to me observing him, even though I didn't know him. And I appreciate his openness in regards to that because it is nerve wracking to make a video about somebody who doesn't know you and be like, I think they're this introspective. I understand how cringy it sounds. Um, the levels as a concept, I think is worded perfectly for two bubbles versus five bubbles. So the joke is, what do a bunch of fives sound like when they're talking? Like a bunch of twos. The only reason human beings come together and have like major strife and, and, and controversy is usually out of fear, misunderstanding, or having a goal that differs from the person in front of them. So when I observe the levels, I'm asking people to consider their introspection level, their extrospection level, but also their relationship with other people through that introspection. If I look at myself and I know I'm a person and I know that words matter and they don't matter, right? We can all say, I love you. And that means different things to different people. Then we have to be very conscientious about the context of those interactions. So I understand that when I label people, now people feel like I'm making a statement of fact, something that I am trying to promote or convince people of. I'm not. The reason my career on YouTube has been so interesting is that it's taught me so much about myself and my audience has definitely grown with me. My analytics shows that as I age, my audience ages, right? So that makes me feel really good about my work because it means I'm growing with my audience and vice versa. The levels is great for branding. When I was collabing with ContraPoints and um, Shoe on Head and all of these people all over YouTube for over my time on YouTube, you know, do, you know, meeting Glenn Beck and Rick Roberts and deciding what I was gonna be and who I was gonna be with, Everyone felt slimy, <laughs> not at first, right? Like not at first, but over time, it became clear that if I didn't have a brand for people to come back to when I collabed, people weren't gonna subscribe. It became clear that if I didn't have a brand, other YouTubers felt uncomfortable around me. Like, who is this girl and what is she doing? I'm not a vlog channel, I'm not a commentary channel. I didn't have a clear brand. Now I am clearly a philosophy, reaction channel, right? Like people know what to do with me. They see the levels and they're like, oh, she has a niche. So I use the levels and the language around the levels, which is very two, to share my worldview and the things that I've gone through. And I'm utilizing, obviously, the fact that I'm like making money and this is my job and the thing that I've really discovered throughout my life. So I've been doing calls and collaborations with people my whole time on YouTube. And I just started the levels like in 2020, 2021, 2022. I don't remember when I first posted it a year ago, year, two years ago, I'll put the date on the video. But the point is, is that I knew the pandemic was happening and I was deciding what I should share with the world, right? That's how I kind of made the decision. I asked my friends, I was like, hey, should I share this with the internet? Is it weird? Is it cringy? Yeah, it's kind of both, right? And it became a brand for the economic perspective. So I do do calls with people. I do them through Patreon or Venmo or whatever. And it's people paying for my time, basically, because all my content is free. I have a Discord that helps fund the channel, but I'm not a very monetized channel. As you guys know, I make like three to $400 a month maybe on YouTube. Um, on a good month, maybe I'll make like $800, whoa, you know, and all of that is like pre-tax and everything. So for me, the using the levels will definitely help capitalize me into a career that could ho hopefully get me to be able to be the breadwinner in my family, which I am or allow me to like raise the kids that I want or buy the house that I want or retire the way that I want. So yes, I will use the levels in the future as a branding tool, but it also is something that really genuinely helped me throughout my life. And utilizing a language system to observe other people and then myself allows me to treat people better. And I think that's something that people are missing. I have so much more patience and compassion for people when I can process that we just live in different realities. When I'm like, you know, head to head with a religious relative and they're very upset about my content or the way that I dress, you can imagine that I could get angry at them and be petty or I could just observe them and say, oh, I think you live in a bubble and I live in a bubble and it's like where you have different bubbles. In my culture, this top is inappropriate. In my bubble where I was raised, this top is inappropriately sexual. 
can we all observe that in leftist circles, progressive circles, feminist circles, obviously this is super modest, but in conservative Catholic Middle Eastern bubbles where I was raised, I could not go home wearing this dress in front of my parents because of the way that it, it moves down towards my breasts. My mom would say something like, oh, you're like trying to like force the eye down into your boobs, which is kind of true. Fashion is meant to accentuate like good parts of our bodies, right? So when I think about the levels, I guess I think about it as something I use for branding, but it's also just something that like I genuinely think works. Now, funny enough, when I was starting off on YouTube, a bunch of my friends were like, oh, like, what's your sh what's your niche? What's your shtick? And I was like, I don't really have one. When I was on talk radio and I was trying to do a radio show for young conservatives, they were like, if you're a lesbian, you have to stay a lesbian. You can't ever pretend you're something different or change what you are. You have to keep your, like, your model. This is a two-bubble narrative. Keeping your model as a niche because it's for your business is fine. I don't care. As a Britney, I don't care. But as a Britney, that's not what I'm doing. I'm not using the levels as a way to make money and I'm never gonna change it. The reason I don't write down the levels is because I don't wanna use it as like a money making machine. I wanna use it as a platform to start the conversation or get the conversation somewhere around there, maybe have shared language. So yes, the levels will be used for branding, but not at the expense of my values. So ask anyone that's ever worked with me, I've turned down money. I continue to turn down sponsors. Ask Lila how many times she has encouraged me to do group calls or encouraged me to do stuff. I'm like, nope, I don't like it. If I don't like it and I'm not comfortable with it, I will turn down money because I can. I can. You know, I'm not a very wealthy person. I make, I make less than six figures a year, but it's good money. I'm very happy to make it. It's more than I ever thought I would make. And I am so grateful that people want to talk to me. And that's how I primarily make my money is through the calls. Okay. So I hope that clears that up. Um, this person goes on to say, does the branding make you feel boxed in? Is it inevitable, inevitable to put it in, oh, I'm sorry, to put into a box as a content creator because it's the best way to form cohesive brand on the platform? Or do you think there are other ways to thrive in the environment? I think I pretty much just answered that with my monologue, but it is hard for me to process that like, oh, people are just gonna see me as like the levels girl or the bubbles girl. And that's obviously not all that I am, but in all fairness, it's what I've branded myself to be. So how angry can I be really? Mm, 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 mm. Okay. With that said, obviously, as I talk, please leave questions on the sections down below on the little on the little chat because I want to hear from you guys. You guys know I spend a lot of time in my Discord. I try to be as social with you guys as I can. I just, I love it. And I'm just so grateful you guys are here. So in no way am I, am I feeling um, defensive of my viewers asking me questions. I love it when you guys do. I am a little upset that content creators have the audacity to accuse me of being a cult leader or a Nazi cult leader or something that's so obviously not true about me that I do get a little riled up at the idea. I'm like, I'm sorry, who are you to accuse me of being something that's so horrible, right? If you've ever watched documentaries on cults, um, not great places to be. So I definitely don't wanna be a cult leader. This next question says, um, why does the other category systems bother you like Myers-Briggs, Enneagram, astrology, and not but not see why others have an issue with your system. I don't know why this comment is phrased this way. I am an ENTJ on the Myers-Briggs test, thank you. I like Myers-Briggs, I've been doing it for like 12 years. I really think it's great. I've read the book, I, or I have the book, you know, I, I use the book first and then now I just use the online websites. But I mean, I like Myers-Briggs. It's not science though, right? In the same way that the levels is not saying they're science, astrology and Enneagram, this is just concepts and systems built by other people to observe people, great. The levels is exactly like Myers-Briggs in astrology and anagram, except it's not written down because I'm not confident enough that this is something that isn't growing, living, and changing. But I do like ENTJ, like I just, ENTJ, I do like Myers-Briggs, I am an ENTJ. I'm really not opposed to these systems. In terms of astrology, like, is that the science stuff? Like I'm a Taurus. I don't know what that means because it's not my bubble, right? Like my bubble is more into like philosophy and like Myers-Briggs makes more sense because I'm into psychology. But astrology is like, even though I'm bisexual, I really should know my astrology. I don't. I wasn't raised in that bubble. I don't really vibe with it. It's fine. I love when my gays tell me what my star signs are and they tell me like my moon rising and stuff. I don't know what retrograde means, but I know sometimes we're in it. I don't mind any of this. All of it is beautiful. I actually hold the belief that every philosophy, every religion, every 
cult, I guess every group has some good in it and you should take from the, like take the good and just like get rid of all the bad. But that's gonna be subjective to our lived experience. So for Brittany, when I read like Myers-Briggs, I was like, this is fun. I made all my siblings do it. I made my sister-in-law do it and we all compared our results and we had so much fun. The levels is something my family debates with me constantly. You know, my friend, the priest, my friend, the priest, we love him. He comes over and literally will debate me. And he is like a canon lawyer for the Catholic Church. He's a deep philosopher. He absolutely is well-read. He 100% has a better vocabulary than I do. And we go ham talking about the levels because people in my life are not afraid to challenge me. And I most certainly am not afraid to like back up my claims. But what people like Max or Mr. Girl or these people, what they're thinking I'm doing is that I am making a claim of knowing when no, I'm making a claim of unknowing. I am actually making a claim so, so outside the norm of all your bubbles that you guys think I'm crazy. I am making the literal claim that we know nothing. Not to be so Socratesian about it, but like, what do we know that we know nothing? Only if you really know that. But we don't because our egos get in the way. We're living here on the micro. And so we think like our narrative, our ego is the only one that matters. Our bubble, our beliefs, which is fine. Which is why even the way that this question is framed is so unique to me, to my brain. My question is, why does other category systems bother you? That's not true. I've never said that. I don't know why that's, that's even there. And then Myers-Briggs, Enneagram, and Astrology are exactly the levels. Only they had the audacity and the ego to write them down. And I don't. Because I know for a fact I couldn't. Because what I'm explaining is a real conversation with the self in relation to all of existence, everything outside the self. Who are you to tell me how to live my life? You are someone who thinks they have the right to. How could a man who's almost 40 feel so confident in telling a person he's never had intimate relationships with, hey, I think you're like a cult leader. I think you're doing bad things. I think you're deceiving your audience. I'm sorry, who are you? You are me and I'm you. We're both human beings living on a planet, sharing oxygen and, and expressing very passionate ideas. And I know Max as a content creator wants to change the world. I know my friend Steven as a content creator wants to change the world. I know, I know, I know, I know. I promise you, I hear you and I see you. I am not like you though. I've already done that. I've already tried that. And I went to therapy for it because girl, it was not working thinking you're going to be this like great savior of the world. And this is a huge complex amongst Gen Z or, I mean, Gen, uh, millennials, me, my, my generation. Millennials were given this promise of being saviors. And then when we got to be adults, we realized, okay, girl, I can barely keep $10,000 in my bank account in my savings. I can barely keep five grand, two grand. It took me until 32 to have more than five grand saved in my bank account. It took me until 30 to stop wanting to kill myself. It took me to 30 to basically move through all of the therapy I needed to get the right diagnoses to move through my, my life, right? And now at 33, I got diagnosed with lupus and I'm just like, okay, <laughs> okay, universe. That's great. That's great. I love that. Okay. Life will throw at you so many different hurdles. And who am I to write down the levels as if your life and my life isn't always changing and evolving? The levels is an evolving concept, a belief that I think you can simplify the human experience into different categories that allow the individual to exist within the nuance. But I know it sounds like I'm not doing that because the human brain, right? It literally thinks like this, black and white, focused. So I am constantly trying to challenge my own brain into saying, why do you feel this way about this? Why do you feel upset? Like, what is it really? It's your biases, your trauma, your history, everything that's living in your body, the trauma lives in the body, like all of that stuff. And I'm trying to say in order to avoid it, I have to be less judgy, but still hold the right to gay judge, which means like, ooh, maybe I wouldn't live like that, but okay, I'll hear you out. And then I have the right for some situations to truly judge you. I'm sorry if that offends some people, but you must understand, right? There are just going to be things that I'm going to absolutely despise like baby rape, which I bring up all the time. And nobody ever, no one ever brings, like every time someone says to me like, oh, Brittany, like people, all people are beautiful. All people are good. I, it just feels like such a privileged statement to me because I'm sitting here like, how could you really think that? Most people are good. Yes, I agree. All people are good. There's not one person on the planet that's truly an, an evil person or a truly bad person. 
because I'm pretty sure if you rape a baby, I'm going to put you in that category. And even in that, I will allow you to still tell me the why. Why did you do that? And then they'll explain it to me. Oh, maybe I had trauma or maybe I just feel attracted to children or maybe I want to love babies the way I feel loved. Okay, great. Thank you for sharing the why. Now what are we supposed to do as a society? Every time I bring up the levels, people go, Brittany, you're too individualistic. You don't think about society or community. Neither are you. You're not thinking about your community if you think all people are good. You're not thinking of your community if you're thinking everyone should be forgiven. You are not really thinking about your community if you're just going to willy-nilly let anyone be anything they want. But then the line of where we stop letting people live their life is where the chaos ensues. Because now I want to live my life this way. I have one life and then I die as far as I know, right? And then here's this person that I don't even know intimately who's going to say, Brittany should be, Brittany shouldn't be doing what she's doing. Why? Who are you to tell me why I should be doing things? You're a person with passion and an ideal and you want to believe that you have the right answer for everyone. But you don't because no one does. So I don't have the right answer for anyone or everyone either. So if I say in Britney's world, I'd like to put all baby fuckers maybe in prison, even though I hate prisons because I hate them. I really do. I think they're awful places, right? And I don't think they help really. I can see why somebody would be upset with me over that. And I can also see why somebody would be like, yeah, that's based. Let's do that. Like throw, let's all throw baby rapist in prison. That sounds based. And then someone, you know, someone out there is going to be like, no, I don't think we should do that. Who, whose idea are we going to pick over the other? The one that works within the bubble we're in, which is why I believe in separation, not segregation. I believe we should all congregate around people that thrive and are are actually joyful when they're around us. Like I live in a small rural community. It's pretty conservative. I'm really progressive, but I really like living here because people mind their own business and don't bother me. But I also am a very private person. When I'm in public, I'm very conservative. And in my house, I have like nude art everywhere and naked ladies and dildos and all this pot and all these things. But the world, like choosing, do you get what I'm saying? Like choosing your bubble and then working within the society is one thing. Coming into the bubble and then disrupting it is another. Yes, sometimes we need disruption, but sometimes you're just fucking annoying. So I think you need to make a decision. When are your actions actually helping because the disruption is moving society forward into a progressive future? And when are you just being fucking annoying? Because I don't think people consider that. Maybe you're just fucking annoying. Always telling people what to do, how to act, how to talk. Do you get what I'm saying? So Brittany has no problems, for the record, with Myers-Briggs, astrology, Islam, Catholicism. I don't care what you believe or what you do but keep it on your side of the lane because like I don't believe in those things and you cannot force me to believe in those things. And if you try to force me to believe in those things, you are no better than anyone else who tries to force us to believe things we don't believe. Indiana Jones, really? I'm filming a podcast. I'm on a roll. I'm monologuing. This girl. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay. Obviously, I'm going to monologue in between these questions because I, I got to be able to express how my brain works. So just bear with me here. <sighs> Next question. I personally love your work and never find it questionable. Thank you, cult member number 72. Um, but for the sake of engagement, what steps do you take to keep both you and your callers emotionally sa safe? Specifically, is there any time in your initial call to clarify what is and is not appropriate within this space? Great question. Okay, let's answer this uh, reverse. So specifically, is there any time spent initially in your initial call to clarify what is and not appropriate within the space? So normally, um, I have every uh, I have the rules like written down and when you sign up, so you can read them. I also cover it in the call. You know, and I always remind people because people are so courteous that they ask. They're like, "Hey, Brittany, I just want to make sure. Am I allowed to message you? Oh, hey, Brittany, I just want to like make sure. Like, what can we talk about? And that that's just so lovely. Like my audience is so consent based that they ask me about my consent and my boundaries, which makes me want to cry because I think a lot of people don't consider the content creator and how we also are afraid. Like I've already dealt with a stalker who, when she approached me many years ago, asked me for help and I went to help her. And then we were in court all of a sudden over restraining orders. So I, I am afraid and I am worried all the time that I'm going to get stalked again, that I'm going to have issues. But I, for some reason, keep coming back to this fucking platform. And I keep wanting to talk to people. And I think it's because it's my calling. I think I'm meant to do this. This is what I think I was put on earth to do. And I'm here to fulfill that greater purpose. But I also am choosing this greater purpose for myself. It 
just makes me so happy. So yes, we usually have those conversations. Most people are adults. Like everyone's an adult. They're always 18 plus because all Patreon is 18 plus for my stuff. All my stuff is 18 plus. My channel is flagged, not for children, all of that. So they're all adults. So they already naturally have those conversations with me, right? So I don't even have to have anything in place or be organized because my viewers are so self-aware that they already do it with me, right? Naturally. Now, what steps, um, or no, I'm sorry. Uh, what steps do we take for, or what steps do you keep both uh, to take to keep both your colors? Okay, and okay. So what steps do I take to keep both myself and my colors emotionally safe? I usually say I'm open, but I have boundaries. I am open but I have boundaries. So I'm more than open to hear your stories, to create a bubble between our call, just me and you. I'm not recording you. I'm not writing anything down about your life, right? I do up to 60 calls a month. That's my limit. And I enjoy that process. It is so fun, right? I try my hardest to communicate clearly that I am a person. I know I'm a YouTuber. I don't really know what that means when you're just a normal person and I'm a middle-class YouTuber. I'm not like a millionaire, right? I don't have a Bugatti. I'm not like Andrew Tate where I'm all over the news. I'm not even Destiny, my friend Steven. I'm not even like popular enough to be anyone important at all. So the idea that I would treat myself as important also goes against my belief system that no one is. I don't think I'm any better or any less than like Nicki Minaj. We talked about this in the live show the other day. I love Nicki. I love Beyonce. They are not better than me. They are not different than me. They are not less than me, right? We're the same. We're both creators. We have audiences. We're on the internet. We are both, are we are all women? Like we're all the same, right? But some people might say like, you have more responsibility because you're a content creator. Maybe if you're a certain kind of content creator, I don't follow this belief system. I think I'm an adult posting content about my life and I'm talking to people as we all do. But I don't think I'm responsible for your actions and I don't think you're responsible for mine. I think we should do our best to keep each other safe and not overstep boundaries, but it happens naturally. Of course, over the years, I've had callers um, like try to violate my consent. Um, I wanna be closer to you than you wanna be to me. I wanna be your friend. I wanna be your lover. I had one girl who literally asked, do I have your consent to convince you to date me? No, bitch, you do not. But what I did is I blocked her, refunded her and thanked her for her time. I had another caller who every time we talked, he's like, so I kind of really want you to top me. And I'm like, okay, but like, I already told you, this isn't an adult call. I'm not interested in topping you. I don't want to play with you. I don't want to do BDSM with you. So you need to decide what we're really talking about during this call because this is inappropriate. I give people three strikes. On his third strike, I thanked him for his time and I blocked him and I refunded him for the call, right? Okay, so I do my best to make it clear to people that like, I don't know what fantasy of me you have in your head, but stop it. And if I get an inkling it's happening, I usually put a stop to it. I've had some callers over time ask me if they can be friends with me. And to tell you the truth, I have an inner circle. That's like where I ride or die. Those are people who know my like name. I'd give them my social security number. I'd give them everything about me. Um, one of those people used to be a caller. We met in 2016. We started talking on our calls. Um, so, you know, life happened. We went to a couple conventions together and met up as friends and we're besties now. Like he's my best friend. His name is Q, Kyoti. He's often featured on my podcast as like a guest. Him and I have had this friendship for so long. It is so deep and so important to me. And that started off because he was a caller. So yeah, when callers ask me, can we be friends? Of course I'm open to it. You could be my next best friend, but probably not because I'm a person with limitations on my spoons. So as I've aged, especially with the lupus stuff, I'm so tired right now. I can't even explain to you how wrecked my body is, but my nutritionist said it's normal. My doctor said it's normal. It's all part of the autoimmune disorder. It's fine. But I don't have the spoons to stretch myself out anymore, right? Like I don't have it. I'm tired and I just want to be a mom and I want to have kids and I'm fucking tired, okay? So when you ask me, can I be your friend? What I need right now in my life is friends who are not gonna emotionally dump on me, friends who are adults. So we're adult friends. Do you guys know what adult friends are in my bubble? I'll tell you. Adult friends in my bubble? My mom, if you ask her, mom, do you have friends outside the cousins? Cause my, my parents' best friends are all their cousins. So they're all Middle Eastern people. They all hang out with other Middle Eastern people. My mom goes, I have lots of friends, Betsy. What about so-and-so and so-and-so? So-and-so and so-and-so -so have not talked to my parents in six to eight years. But they're friends because if they ever had to, they could reach out. If they ever had to get together and it was a wedding, they would be invited, right? That's the kind of friendships I want as I age. I want friends who do not need inner circles or 2 a.m. calls. I cannot be your 2 a.m. call, boo-boos. I have, I have so many people I take care of already. I cannot have one more, right? 
So when you ask me, can I be your friend? Only an adult friend, meaning somebody that I kind of know, somebody who I might see. Maybe we get closer and I invite you over to my house for a barbecue because it's been 12 years and I know you and you know me. Maybe, 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 maybe. Because we're adults living on a planet that's full of constructs. Yeah, am I gonna change how I do things in order to socialize with great, amazing people that I meet on the internet? Sure. But what does that mean in terms of closeness? And what does that mean in terms of my safety and your safety? It means we have to be open and communicative and we have to be reasonable about when we're getting overly attached. It has happened to me. People have definitely gotten overly attached to me over time. And they'll say things like, Brittany, I think you're this kind of person and this kind of person. And the only thing I can say to them is like, okay, Because you haven't asked me, you didn't ask for clarification, you didn't try to get the answer from me, you didn't give me the benefit of the doubt, those people just get like written off. Because they're like everyone else I meet everywhere. People who are fake and people who have feelings and people who decide their trauma or their feelings are more important than anyone else's. And I don't need friends like that. So do I want to be friends with you? Maybe. Are you a reasonable, rational person who knows good boundaries and isn't going to trauma dump on me? Probably I'll be your friend. But otherwise, no. Now, I know a concern that a bunch of people had, including Mr. Girl, was that I was like preying on vulnerably, like mentally ill people. I don't know what that means, but I think I know what it means. And I absolutely do not want an audience of completely inept, mentally ill people. I want an audience of totally functional or working on it, people who happen to maybe have mental illnesses like I do. Because as a person with borderline, I understand that boundaries are very important. I went to therapy. I learned boundaries, emotional regulation. I learned how to control and have a relationship with my body, my feelings, and my trauma within my consciousness. And this is what I've produced. If you feel like you're better at producing that balance between your trauma brain and your consciousness, please provide me with answers. Otherwise, this is how I did it for me. And obviously, if you've been following my journey, you can see that I've really done it. Because the Brittany I was three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine years ago was unhinged. She was sick and worried and constantly trying to kill herself while she was pulling 60 hour weeks. And now I pull like longer weeks, but they're better because I'm better, right? Like I invested in myself and I invested in my sanity and I didn't do that thinking someone else was gonna save me. I did it knowing I was gonna save myself like when my therapist told me I was going to. My job as a person who's doing calls with you is not to give you the answers to your existence. It's to brainstorm with you what you already know about yours. You already know you're struggling. You already know you're looking for something. You already know what it probably is. It's joy. And if I can word vomit with you for an hour and then you go, oh shit, I didn't think about it that way. Cool, thanks bro. And then you peace out and go live your best life. That is a successful call. Funny enough, um, my business group, because they're running a business in capitalism, always says like, you should want to meet, like keep your customer, keep your caller. And I'm the only one in the group who's like, I'm not going to do that. And they're like, what do you mean? I was like, I'm not, I don't want to keep the same callers for the rest of my life because it means they're not, it, it could mean stagnation. And that annoys me because what I'm offering is just my time. And after a while, like my callers are going to have kids or maybe they have kids already and their kids are going to need their attention or like their life is going to get pulled in different directions. I'm not trying to run a business that keeps a customer. I'm trying to run a business that allows me to make a living and have children and offer something to people that I think is valuable, even if they need it once or if they need it for 10 years. But it is not, I'm not, I don't want a lifelong customer. I know that's what businesses are supposed to do, but I'm not that much of a business, okay? Like I'm just a Britney. (laughs) I just want enough money to have a house and kids, which I think is what we all kind of want, enough money to have the life we want, right? So that's how I think of it, and that's how I try to maintain the safety. Of course, like I said, everything's 18 plus. We go over like negotiation words. I even teach people safe words if they need it. Um, But the issue I think that people are really confused about is because – Like my callers decide what the call is about. Sometimes callers just watch anime with me, talk to me about politics. Sometimes we just talk about YouTube. Sometimes they call me up and they're like, hey, I have nothing to talk about. What's on your mind? If I had a dollar, please, if you do calls with me, can you fucking share in the comment sections what our calls are like or something so people know? But also, all y'all got to admit how many of you sign up for calls and you're like, I don't even know why I'm calling you. I'm like, okay, cool. What do you want to talk about? They're like, well, what do you want to talk about? Bitch, I talk for a living. You got to tell me what you want to talk about. But like people do that to me. They'll sign up for $250 for an hour and then be like, what do you want to talk about? And I'm like, 
I'm, I get to talk for a living. So you better come up with something to talk about. This is your time. This isn't a, this isn't the Britney hour. This is the you hour or us hour. But that's just how humans are. Humans are going to human. They're not even sure sometimes why they do certain things. But like if you had a chance to pay $300, $500, $600 to talk to somebody that you like in the public, would you not do that? Because I would. I would. I actually stole this model from Jordan Peterson because Jordan Peterson was charging that much money to do calls with people. And I was like, that's pretty dope. I want to do that. But not as a psychologist. He wasn't doing it as a therapist. He was doing it as a content creator. And that's why I liked it. Because I was like, oh, I can do that as a content creator. Why not? Why not, right? Because like I would love that. Oh my God. If I paid $1,000, $2,000 to talk for an hour to like some celebrity that was like very far and unreachable to me and I could just like use money to get to them. Yeah, bitch, that's what I would do. Use money as a tool. Use your time as a tool. If you don't like my content, don't watch it. But if you sign up for a call, this is your hour, baby. Make the best out of it. Like really make the best out of it. <clears throat> Excuse me, girls. Also, I know you guys can't smell this candle but it smells really really good it's so yummy it's so yummy okay so let's go to the next one great question so far guys oh my god killing it okay oh from one of my favorites would you um <clears throat> sorry would love to hear your perception of the issue why do people characterize you as unable to accept criticism um how do you relate to the criticisms leveled at you in stream by max mr girl and what is your opinion on subjectivism okay so first how do you characterize uh, why do people characterize you as unable to accept criticism? Because they don't know how to criticize. So they think my inability to engage is a reflection of me and not them. Max is the worst person when it comes to communication. You are. You're the worst, Max. You accuse and you attack and you do not listen and you're not open to change, right? Which is fine in your bubble. So you have to stay on your side of the lane because you are not working in conjunction with me. You're not open to me. So I think when people criticize me, they see me as evading and I see them as disrespecting. If you want me to be open and vulnerable with you about the fact that I cry when people think I'm a cult leader and I go to my women's business group and I'm crying in front of all these women who make shit tons more money than me. They're like like great people and they're just watching me cry because I'm like some guy on the internet said I was like a cult leader and I'm not a cult leader and I don't know what to do. Like that's seriously my life. You're not owed that vulnerability. I am resentful at the idea that the internet thinks they get my tears. But congratulations, I just admitted publicly that I do cry about it because I do. Because it's frustrating when you work so fucking hard in your life and you sacrifice and you, you accomplish beating suicide and your borderlines in remission and you're fucking killing it. And the only criticism I get is like, there must be something wrong with her because she seems happy. Fuck off. Huh? Like not to be such a child. I know my mother's screaming right now. Don't flip people off. It's rude. It frustrates me that people think they're, they're actually asking real questions when they're not. If Destiny, if I've even offered for Steven and I to do a collab with like Chud or like um, other people who are angry at me to like answer these questions, but they don't answer honestly. When I was doing my um, panel with Chud Logic and Mr. Girl and uh, Lav and everybody, Lav and I started to do a full call, right? Like I started to do a full call because I'm so fucking confident that what I do is fire, right? I'm so confident that I am being transparent and that I'm honest. So Lav and I started our call. We got like six minutes in and Chud interrupted. And he goes, do you think this is worth 250? And I'm like, okay, well, bro, this isn't the crux of the 250, right? But also I'm worth 250. It's not that the call is necessarily worth 250. I am worth 250. Spending time with me could be worth your 250. Now, if a customer, if a patron says, I didn't really enjoy our call. I actually thought it wasn't as what I wanted. Can I get a refund? Sure, I'll give you a refund. And then you're never allowed to have a, have a call with me again. Because there are scammers out there who have tried to do this to me before where they will sign up for calls and then they will like ask for a refund and then come back the next month and then try to do a call with me and then ask for a refund. And I'm like, hey, I'm seeing a pattern where you're holding a call spot and you're not utilizing it and I'm not making the money I'm supposed to be making. And now someone else who could have used that call spot or wanted it or would have paid for it and actually made their appointment, you're not taking. And also, I just want to give a shout out to all of my generous and amazing and compassionate callers who, when they reschedule more than once, really allow or if they miss their appointments more than once, will be like, Brittany, just take, the, take it as a donation, as a tip, whatever. You know, just take the money. I won't do my call. I already asked you to reschedule more than once. That's so unfair to you. That's so considerate. Thank you. Thank you. Because that's them seeing me and knowing that I'm a one woman show. I do have my editor, Len, who is amazing and definitely going to be, uh, you know, hopefully with me for many, many years. Right. 
But otherwise, other than paying Len to help me clip clips, right? I'm just a person in my room. This is my bedroom because I don't have enough money to buy a house with an extra bedroom so I can have an office. Okay? So I'm open to criticism, but you all need to learn how to criticize better instead of attacking me, demoralizing me, and then pushing me into a corner where no matter what I say, I'm a cunt. Okay? I won't tolerate it. How do you relate to criticisms leveled at you in stream by Max? How do you relate to the criticisms leveled at you in stream by Max? What is your opinion on subjectivism? Um, I don't know how to answer this question. How do you relate to the criticisms? I just feel like they're so empty, the criticisms, that they're not even worth my time. They're just not worth it, right? If you, as an audience though, want to give me questions, that is worth it to me because you guys really want to know the answers and you're willing to see me as a person, right? Max just sees me as like a cult leader. And once you see someone as like an enemy, it's really hard to humanize them. So as far as I am concerned, Max does not see me as a person. So he's not worth engaging with. What is your opinion on subjectivism? I believe heavily in the subjective consciousness. Like the, the reality that I am experiencing is not the one you're experiencing. Have you ever like had an argument with a family member and you're like, I do not remember it that way. And they're like, I remember it that way. And you're sitting there like, we just said this 30 minutes ago. How are we arguing about what we just remembered? Because that's how life goes. We misremember. Some of us have better memories than others. Some of us smoke a lot of pot or in my case, edibles because I have lupus. But like the point is, is that we are all having different relationships with what is real. And I'm saying it's different. I watched this video by like Jubilee or Cut or something and they're talking about couples who hooked up and then years later they asked like, how was your first time with this person? And they had both had different stories. That is the human experience. That's why it's so scary to be a person. That's why it's so scary to trust someone. That's why it's so scary to fall in love. Like you're looking at another person, like I'm 33 and I'm dating and I'm like looking at this other human. I'm like, hi, I know we've both lived like decades. Um, I guess I'm going to trust you to like mold with me and make a life with me and then have my children with me. I guess. It's so scary. And yet we keep doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it. You know how many, no matter how many times I've been betrayed or lied about or rumors spread about me that aren't true I still have friends because when you move through life you just know that's a part of it burning bridges making enemies people lying about you you may be lying about people gossiping about people it's just how life goes so subjectivism as a concept relativism all of this idea everyone always asks me like oh Brittany are you a relativist are you like it's not about Britney identifying with a word that was created by a group. I don't even identify with the levels. It's just, I think all ideas have good parts and I like all of them. I'm not sure if there's an objective moral system, an objective reality, an objective, 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 but I hope to find out during my lifetime and I don't think I will, but I think I'll have fun looking for it. The reason I love philosophy is because even though I think all the answers have been given to us, there's still the questions we're arguing. What is the self? How do you know? What do you believe? What does it mean to be a person? What is a consciousness? We are still arguing over this as we will be for, I think, a thousand more years because we're humans and humans repeat cycles. So I'm not upset that Max is being very human, but I am worried that a mob created by a person with as much charisma as Max could push people into stalking me again, harassing me. They could possibly try to get my Patreon taken down. So yeah, that stuff worries me. But I also know it's just so part of being human. It's what I've consented to by being a content creator. I've consented to being stalked in so many ways because I'm a content creator, even though I really don't want to be stalked. It's so scary. But that's also just what my life is. Next question. I appreciate that you're giving the critique a serious response. I think a lot of people who came across your channel casually might be taken in the taken in by the Brit is a cult guru i uh, sorry, is a cult guru taking advantage of helpless mental, mentally ill people, close quotes, narrative. And having been a follower of your channel for quite a while, it frustrates me to no end. Thank you. It frustrates me too. It frustrates my family. Like, it's so annoying. These YouTubers love to get on their high horse and pretend they are m the morality police who know the objective truth of righteousness. You're allowed to set a price for on your personal time to speak with people. They told YouTubers, they hold YouTubers to a higher standard than coaches at this point. Honestly, people just... Um, just have to take your word for it that you turn away people who need serious professional help. I've never seen anything to make me doubt that you would not allow a dangerous parasocial obsession to continue in your 
one-on-ones. You've already dealt with a stalker. Why the hell would you want to risk another? Exactly. So this is more of a, yes, this made me feel seen. This made me feel understood. It's like, bros, do you think I want another stalker? Fuck no, I do not. But the stalker is the rarity. Things going bad is the rarity. Because I also believe most people are good, I also believe that majority of my audience is good. Yes. Do I absolutely have people in my audience that I would never be alone, like alone in a room with? Absolutely. But do I have a lot of people in my audience that are amazing, smart, just so fucking, just their consciousness, like the person that they are, the real, like the individual that they are, the literal consciousness that exists in no one else but this person is so fucking cool. And I don't want to miss out on the opportunity to, 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 to meet those people, right? Um, same way I feel about YouTubers. Like, I like that Steven and I are friends and Kyla and Melina. Like, that's so fun. Like, I, they're just, they're, so, they're such nice people and it's so fun to hang out with them and to like have you, and Sneeko, I love Sneeko so much. But we're still getting to know each other, right? Like, I don't know them any more than I know my callers. If anything, I actually know some of my callers way better than I know them. But yet nobody would question if the YouTubers were hanging out, right? Because we're all the same. But my callers, my viewers, my audience, you are the same as me as well. Like, yes, I'm a YouTuber, but don't you also have a job? I mean, I have callers who are like in the medical field. I have callers that are mostly college graduated. I have, I have callers that are all so unique and different and they're also adults. They're also badasses in their lives. So them talking to me is just two people who are the same talking. We might have different introspection levels. We might come from different bubbles, but we're all the same in the end. So I don't see the difference between really talking to one of my callers and like talking to a YouTuber. Like I said, one of my callers became one of my literal best friends. Like I would cut off my left arm for him, not my masturbation arm. That one's really important. But I'd cut off my left arm for him if he needed it. Like, do you need it? I'll cut it off right now. Do you guys get what I'm saying? In order to humanize you, you need to humanize me. In order to humanize me, I need to humanize you. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. I felt really seen reading that. Okay. Um, okay. This is kind of a long one. I think your convo with Lav was most the most interesting one you one you've had. And I'm wondering if you have any thoughts um, that have evolved past the discussion or post discussion with her. To be honest, the levels don't click for me. It's just not the way my brain works. But I do find introspection to be something I value highly in other people. I wonder though if by nature of being the creator, you've given yourself a system where you are the final arbiter in deciding what introspection looks like to you without leaving much room for people who have come to understand the world differently from you and go through very different journeys to remove themselves from the bubbles. So you'll see someone like Sneeko as introspective because you recognize his journey is similar to yours. But he does a similar thing to you where he calls people bots. I see similarities with how you use bubble speak. In order to not engage with certain points that might otherwise have val validity, but use keywords slash language that you recognize as indicating they come from a specific group. Do you think that this can be limiting to classify people that way? Do you worry that it might be might become cyclical as in as in creating your own bubble to confine yourself to? Or do you think it helps you personally to see people better, especially uh, in one on one conversations? So it's actually a co great question. It's a combination of all these things. So um, Sneeko and I. OK, first and foremost, everyone lives in bubbles. Listen to me. Listen to me. We all live in bubbles period. I live in a bubble and you live in a bubble. There is no one who doesn't live in the bubbles. The only time you aren't in the bubble is when you're practicing conscientious present existence. The only time you're not thinking in a bubble way is when you are genuinely sitting down and living in a present moment, which is why the one-on-one -on -one calls are so powerful and awesome for people because I allow a safe space where I'm not going to fucking judge you, bitch. There ain't no bubble here. We're the bubble. So what are the rules of the conversation? Anything goes. Except abusing you consent. <laughs> but like we can talk about anything. We can discover anything together. So I think it's a combination of these things. I am a limited person. We all hold biases. I am not perfect. But I am trying to say that. I am trying to openly be okay with like, yeah, bro, I don't know. We're like in a bubble. And like we're chilling. We're chilling. But other people see it as me because I speak with like a period at the end of my sentence as pushing a narrative like they do of right. I am right. I am not right. There's nothing to be right about. I am correct in saying most of us don't know most things, which I think we'd all admit. But then we act like we do know most things. And that's where I get pissed. So Sneeko is obviously going through this journey and I'm like watching him do it. And I love watching him do it. It's the best thing ever. And yes, he is similar to me. So I can see where he's going and I can understand him better. But that's because I see him. You're right. 
There are people I can't see. I feel like I can't see Mr. Girl, if I'm being honest with you. I think I see him as like the trope that he is and the character that he's playing, but I have to push him to the side because I can't engage with him because we have no similar language. We don't see each other very well. I know he's a person living a life, but it's different. Like Max is a person who openly said he can't guarantee he won't beat another one of his girlfriends because he's hit his girlfriend before. And he's saying, I'm not sure I won't do it again. And I'm saying, I'm pretty sure I'm never gonna hit my girlfriend because like I don't hit my girlfriends unless I'm put in a situation that is so outside of the norm so outside of capacity that I'm basically not even myself in that moment sure maybe I could hit my girlfriend but that is like so contextual based right that it's like there's where's the nuance the nuance is maybe things could happen but mostly people are pretty consistent so people generally speaking have patterns to them right and unless you drastically change your life and become an anomaly like a statistical anomaly right we are basically pretty the same like I've been the same personality my whole life right the things that will change about Brittany as I age are how I talk maybe I'll get a better vocabulary one day (laughs) probably not you know I might be a little bit more calm I hope to have like a much more calm energy as I age but who knows probably not you know some of my family is hyper so when I interact with the bubbles of course I'm limited of course I'm biased Q and I argue on the discord all the time about cheating destiny Melina We've argued about pro cheating, not cheating. Destiny, my friend Steven, will literally say things like, oh, I don't care if my girlfriend cheats on me. Are we talking about the same thing? Maybe, kinda, sort of, sometimes? We all hold biases. When I'm in a relationship, my requirement and standard for that relationship is so specific because I wanna thrive in it. But it's not the standard I would hold to anyone else's relationship because you're not dating me. I actually told my partner, hey, we need to make sure we are making decisions for our life away from the world. So we, we, two, we, can actually form the world we want for us and our kids, right? It's not like I sat here and looked at him and was like, hey, should we, should we, I don't know, like ask other people? Should we, hey, should I ask my conservative mother that doesn't want me to have sex before marriage if we should have sex before marriage? No, I don't need to go ask every person about what to do in my relationship, like read a book. I've read thousands of books and what you learn is that there are thousands of billions of bubbles and everyone has different advice about what's efficient and it has to work for your brain. So advice I'd give to Sneeko isn't advice I'd give to every caller because Sneeko isn't every caller. Sneeko, Sneeko, right? Um, So let me see. I think people repeat patterns and then we're going to like repeat like history, but history doesn't repeat itself. We repeat history because we're humans and we're all going through journeys. So I think even if the world was all fives, who cares? We would give birth to babies and babies are twos and babies can choose to be ones. Like when I have a kid, I'm not going to force my kid to be a five. What does that even mean? That kid is going to do what they want because that kid has free will and they have an ability to have a relationship with their consciousness and existence outside of it or within it, depending on how you think of the consciousness. But like the point is, is that I am making the stance that I don't know. And everyone is making the stance that they think I think I know. But I'm not, okay, I don't know. And I'm saying it's kind of crazy that we're all so arrogantly sure we know. You ever have somebody come up to you and they're like, can you believe Trump? And I'm like, okay. And those same people that are so anti-Trump for abusing women are so pro-Bill Clinton, right? Like I know, I always tell that story about my mom, like my best friend's mom, blah, blah, blah. It's like the same story I tell again. Why does this happen? Why does this happen? I saw today, I got in a thing on Twitter today. Y'all are... I love you so much. I got on Twitter today and Kyla Erdite was putting out a tweet about, I guess there's like some conservative politician who's like talking shit on gay people and then he was caught sucking a dick. That's so normal. And everyone's like, we should out him. I don't think so. So in Britney's value system, I'm not going to out someone just because they're a homosexual who holds anti-homosexual beliefs. I don't think outing him matters because I think gay people can hold anti-gay beliefs, right? Like I was a conservative and I was in the closet and I... I know what that's like, right? So for me, I don't think outing him is helpful, but someone was, you know, arguing back and forth that it's hypocritical and he should be held accountable and that's fucked up. It's just pretty human. I'm not the one who's sitting here going, we should go back in time. No, we should move forward. And the progression should look like more freedom and more choice. Choice over my body, my gender, my religion, my reality, everything. Because the truth is, that's what we've all been doing. How can you look me in the face and say, I'm a Muslim, this is reality. I am a Catholic, this is reality. I am an atheist, this is reality. And have all three of you arrogantly demanding that I pick one of you when all of you are the same. You are individuals living your one limited life with a limited understanding of knowing, having the audacity to 
you know, convert and evangelize and fucking preach that you're better than everyone else and I'm the only goddamn person on this YouTube fucking sphere who's saying we're all the same. Bro, I don't want to hurt you. I don't want to stab you. I don't want to kill you. I don't want to fuck you. I don't want to do anything against your consent that would harm you because I don't want you to do that to me. But it's always going to look different. I, Brittany, don't mind if you throw slurs my way as long as we're friends. Or even if like you're being funny, I don't care. Someone else might not like that. And that's the question we're always arguing. That's what Destiny's been arguing for fucking a decade. That's what everyone is arguing. Where is the line? The line is a construct. The line doesn't exist. There is no line. You have to put it down. And the moment you put down the line, you create the bubble. I live in a bubble because I have rules and lines. If you want to fuck with Britney's bubble, you got to fucking, you got to follow the rules, right? I'm open, but I have boundaries. And I'm saying I would like to hear from people who would more have this conversation in that way. Yeah, I'm putting down a line. I want to stop you from existing. I want people to just openly say it. Say that you want to control me versus pretending you don't. Because I genuinely rarely want to control people. Sometimes yes, mostly no, right? Like I might dislike that you're going around serial cheating and spreading STIs. I genuinely hate it. I am never going to advocate for a law where you get thrown in prison for doing that because I think it's kind of fucked up. Now, if you're purposely going and trying to like murder people by giving them an illness that could kill them, maybe we could talk about that. But mostly when people spread STIs, they're embarrassed. They feel self-conscious. They want to believe they don't have it. I know a girl or knew of a girl, I guess, who had a relationship with her STI where she was like, I don't even feel like I have it. I'm like, but don't you? And it's like, yeah, but like, I don't even feel like I have it. So I'm going to have unprotected sex. They're embarrassed. They're not even bad people. They're just really embarrassed because of the shame brought on by bubbles. Shame is a useful tool in a bubble. It can be very helpful. It can deter people from hurting other people or it can end up causing more harm. And we are always learning about how to cause less harm, but it's such a journey. And you all are so hard on yourselves and you're so hard on me and you're so hard on everybody and you don't have to be. I'm going to hold them accountable. I'm going to make them, I'm going to make them pay for what they did. Okay. You can go on your revenge arc if you want. I am saddened when somebody has made such a decision that now I am forced to hold you accountable. I hate it. I hate it. But it's also a part of life. So when anyone in my inner circle fucks up, especially royally, I always tell them I love you. There's something that has to be done about this. And I don't think this defines you for the rest of your life. Ow. But I think you should consider how to pay who you hurt back in a way that makes sense for both of you. Sometimes a victim doesn't want to hear from you. And I think that's a good way to be held accountable. Because often in things like AA or even borderline therapy, when I went to DBT, I was told in DBT, I never went to AA. So I'm just, I'm associating the two ways they do this. You're supposed to go to the people that you've hurt and you're supposed to apologize and you're supposed to say, I'm so sorry that I've hurt you. I do have borderline as an explanation for my bad behavior, but not an excuse for it. I would still like to let you know that I'm sorry. Some of those people never wanted my call. Some of those people won't want your call. Out of respect to them, don't force your recovery to be, to be um, only healed by violating their consent. If you want to heal yourself and you can't reach out to someone to apologize, then do right by them by vicariously doing something that you know they would like. Maybe they're like really into animals, donate to an animal charity. Maybe they're like super into saving the earth, pick up some litter one day. You know what I mean? There are ways when you go on the journal journey of personal introspection, there are ways to learn how to forgive yourself even when you can't talk to those people, right? So I think that's like how I think about it. I think about life as a journey. I'm born, I didn't choose to be here, and I'm doing my best with what I've been given. Sometimes my bubbles give me really helpful information. Like, hey, Brittany, this is how you can get proper STI protection, and this is how you can avoid pregnancy so you don't have to have an abortion. Great. Hey, Brittany, here's a way you can avoid an abortion called natural family planning. You'll have to know your cycle, and you'll have to be really careful about your ovulation time. Okay, also great, a little bit more work. So which one am I going to choose? The easier one where you just put something in my arm and I don't have to think about it? Or the other one where I have to like figure out my period? What if I have an irregular period? Oh my gosh, 
Both are helpful, both have worked, but for my brain, I'm more likely to go with the birth control method because it's more efficient for my life. But for someone else, they might go with the natural family planning method, which is also valid, which might work better for their life. And I think that's how life should be. We should see all the options and pick the ones that work the best for our joy and facilitate our greatness. Actually, after talking to Stephen, we talked about C.S. Lewis and how he, Stephen, felt like he was we're made, we have this great purpose, we have skills and things we should move towards. I do think this is my talent. I do think this is my calling. But I think I also choose my calling. I feel like I have a relationship with free will, which allows me to, to kind of course my life. But because of introspection, I've been able to course it more steadily. I didn't have all of this information until now. Looking back on past Brittany and watch my videos, the Brittany Simon Through the Levels, Watching that Brittany who went on that journey to here, all she was doing was gathering tools. All I'm going to continue is gather tools. I'm always just going to be gathering tools, right? Even right now, making this podcast, I actually think it's going really well. So much of it is going well because in my head, I'm like, damn, this is really helpful. This is cathartic to like finally fucking talk about it in a real way, to not have any like interruptions from a live show, to be like in the moment talking to you. I really hope my OBS is recording all of this because I don't have to want, I don't want to redo all of this. <laughs> but like it's, it's making me feel really good. I hope it's making you guys feel good because I do want to be open. I don't think I'm hiding anything. I think my life is really simple and boring. And I think people want to think it's really exciting, but I just, I come home like everyone else. I work from home. I have my siblings here. Um, we order groceries and we make food together and we watch Queer Eye and we play Smash. So it's just like a normal life, right? Um, okay, so this comment says, um, I don't, uh, basically I don't have a problem with anything. It's just that the levels aren't really a scientific theory. It might be possible to do research on them if there was a, a, a rigorous criteria, but at the moment there isn't any. Exactly, exactly. I don't want any rules. I'm saying the rules are the issue. I'm saying the rules are the issue, right? I'm saying, I'm just saying maybe people have different relationships with themselves and so we're gonna have different relationships with them. There's no scientific method. There's no like fucking like, or not scientific, but there's no scientific like, how would you study introspection in people except to talk to 8 billion people, right? Like the only thing I can do is say, okay, the way you're having this conversation doesn't allow for any possibility that you're going to change your mind, you're probably a two, right? Like my friend who's pro-cheating, I can see logically exactly why he would be pro-cheating. Let's say you have a, a couple who's in an abusive relationship and one of the people have to get out. Like in that case, like what is a marriage if you're abusing your partner? Is there any vows to keep sacred in that case? Because you know what I'm saying? So he might feel justified in sleeping with a married woman or vice versa. And in his head, and that makes sense to me, right? I agree with that. I agree that if somebody's having an abusive relationship, they might feel those vows are no longer valid. Brittany, my bubble, my reality, I don't like it. I want to get out of that abusive relationship saying I never cheated. I never did anything against my values because that's what it matters. That's what matters to me is my values. <clears throat> so when I think of introspection, I think of the relationship you have with yourself and then of course against existence and within it. But I think about how and why I feel certain ways about things. I don't like cheating because it's not honest and it's not honorable. But I understand why people cheat. I'm okay with it in general. Like as a concept for those bubbles, I can fuck with it. In my bubble, no. So my partner knows like we are monogamous, no cheating. If there's any cheating, I'm going to be very upset and I'm going to break up with you. And even if we're married, like in sickness and in health, in sickness and in health does not include cheating. It doesn't. But it could in some relationships. And I think that's okay. Right? So I think that's okay. I love this commenter. What value do you see uh, the values bringing to your life and others? How do you use it to benefit you in this way? I think it makes me more patient and more kind and more willing to hear people out. It makes me feel more seen when people understand it. It makes me also have better conversations with people often. Um, I know a lot of people will make fun of like the bubble word, but everyone uses it. I've seen it used on Netflix shows. Destiny just used it in his podcast with um, Adam, whatever his name is from No Jumper. And then once I'm kind of like in your comfortable bubble where we feel like we're like vibing hard, then I could kind of like question some of the things you're saying mm. to like kind of change your viewpoint a little bit. Um, or with the way you put it before, like I want other audience to be like, oh, I can fuck with this dude. Right. Like he's kind of a faggot, but like he's like <laughs> an okay, he's an okay faggot. It's like how people describe me sometimes depending right. on where they see me. So yeah, that's like, that's that's generally my goal. I, I don't want to come there and be like, fuck, he's here to debate me on every single topic. Right. I just want to show up and they're like, okay, you know, like, I don't know if I agree with what he's saying, but like, at least he's honest. And I kind of, you know, I fuck with that. That's right. cool. Right. Like bubble is a word that makes sense. 
and that's why we use it. But because it's attached to a woman, like a single person, because it's attached to like a YouTuber, because it's attached to the levels, because I'm like goofy and silly and I borderline and everyone's like, oh, Brittany's so funny with her silly little words, bubbles. She's the bubble queen, as if the world isn't using bubbles. And that's why I know you live in a bubble because you think I made up the word bubble. Like everyone's like, Brittany made up the word bubble. I No, I didn't. It's just a word. Lots of people reference bubbles as bubbles. Lots of people. I'm just, I just like the word. But if you want to give me credit for inventing it, girl, I'll take the credit. But like, it's not real. And I know it's not real. And the fact that Max and other people don't know that it's not real is funny. Because it's kind of just proof that the bubbles are real. It's kind of proof that my, my observations are accurate. I am observing that human beings are unable to think of a reality outside of their own, generally speaking. And that seems to be clear even with like the questions people are throwing at me. Right? So it, it kind of like boosts my ego because I'm like, the levels, like the bubbles, the bubbles. Like it is happening around us. And I just don't think it's a big deal that I was like, hey, look, that's happening. Because a lot of people before me also said, hey, look, that's happening. And everyone's like, don't care. So it just, it's why I can be so loosey-goosey about life and so happy and be like, eh. Because like they're just repeating patterns. Like we're, all of us are just repeating patterns. I think the world is a reflection of us. We are the ultimate karma. Said Guru would say karma is a reflection of what you've put into your life and you're getting it back. Not like I do one good deed, I get a good thing back. The whole universe is a reflection of us. Like all of earth, all of the way things go is a reflection of us. So if you want to go around outing people as gay, fine. But within my value system, no. If you want to go around cheating, fine. But in my value system, no. Just because you do a fucked up thing doesn't mean I'm going to do a fucked up thing. And that's the difference between me and you is that I stick to my values as much as I can. And other people pretend they have values that they pretend to stick to. Okay. Um, you've always said that the levels helps you and people who are like you, but I think people who are not like you don't see the value you get from it. And so you can read, so, and so you, and so can read your claims of saving your life as vaguely alluding at some grand claim that can never be disproven. I think ironing out exactly what the levels does for you and how it improved your life and how you utilize it better would help offer a message that, uh, uh, offer a response to what is the root of the criticisms of of your criticism sorry I think my doctor just called me so I'm like oh I'll answer that in a second um yes yeah, so I did this in the levels video I talked about my whole journey it's a whole podcast um it's there like I've already talked about this a thousand times and so everyone's like we'll just make a video where everyone can watch it I'm doing it right now in this video sort of and I guarantee you most people aren't going to watch it because it's getting long it's a long video and people don't have the attention span or in my sphere of the internet, we actually almost always do. But that's what I'm trying to say too. I'm trying to say there is nothing to do. You're panicking and freaking out. Brittany, do this so people don't hate you. Brittany, do this so people don't misunderstand you. Brittany, do this. They will always misunderstand. They will always assume because that's what, that's life. Just don't hurt me. Don't rape me. Don't cancel me. Don't try to like deplatform me just because I make you uncomfortable. But you will probably because like you're like everyone else and everyone does that. And that's why humans are humans. Because we, when we're uncomfortable or afraid, we try to get rid of that thing. Whether by killing them, deplatforming them, canceling them, eradicating them from the planet. When we don't like something, we do try to get rid of it. Which is why I can't take anyone's criticism seriously if your only criticism is that I shouldn't get to live my life the way I want to. Is that the criticism? Because if so, I reject it. Okay. Um, question about uh, Mr. Girl and stuff. Like well, this person says, why do you continue to interact with them at both your expense and your audiences? Obviously almost any conversation, almost any conversation is worth having if both parties are open, but I feel like we're, we've established they aren't. Totally. I, I don't actually follow Max anymore. And the only way I talk to him is if Steven's there because Steven is like very able to translate for Max I don't know how to talk to Max like I don't know how to talk to people who are like I know you better than you know yourself I actually think you're this way and I'm never going to change my mind it's like okay I don't know what to do with that like I I'm just talking to a wall and I told myself when I came back to YouTube after my stalker that I would stop talking to walls so I'll talk to Max with Steven there because then Steven is the not wall that I can talk to and then he can talk to Max and then Max can talk to Steven and Steven can talk to me but yeah, as grown adults, the fact that we even need a translator is not great. It's just a sign that we can't see each other or aren't mature enough to have that conversation. Which I actually think is Mr. Girl's fault. 
I'm going to put it on there. I'm not taking responsibility for a miscommunication, except that I'm going to make the claim that maybe I just can't see him and that's the problem. But I just know he's a person who thinks that people with borderline shouldn't help people. He thinks Marshall Linehan, Dr. Marshall Linehan, who did DBT, shouldn't be able to work with patients because she is borderline. That is so far removed from my reality. All my A, a friends, all my um, narcotic uh, a, uh, NA friends, all my friends who have gone through AA or some variation of it, I don't, we wouldn't, we're not even processing what that statement is. And so we might not be able to see Max because we're like, what does that mean? Like, what does that even mean? Who better to go to than someone who's been through it, right? But for some people, like Max, I guess that's a no. But see, that's just a different reality. It's a different bubble. I, again, I'm not even, I can't even process. How is that helpful? Like, I don't even understand that. You know what I mean? That thinking. So I don't really engage, right? And also, if uh, we're thinking about like other people, like Lav was really mad at me. Lav and I are cool. We figured it out. No biggie, right? If other people want to do that and figure it out, great. No biggie. Um, but I don't think that's what Max wants, right? He doesn't want to figure it out. He wants to just make his statement and walk away. All right, next question. If somebody has a similar business model to you, i.e. personal calls for a large sum of money, how would you consider as an outsider determine if you thought there was abuse of power happening? I probably couldn't and I probably wouldn't think about it. Um, I work with a lot of, uh, like I'm in a business group and obviously they charge for their hours because like my nutritionist charges me. Like why wouldn't people charge me for their time, right? So I don't, I mean, I pay my doctor for their time. So I don't really understand why what I'm doing is weird. Um, the abuse of power would come from like, I don't know, like how would you even determine that? Like where's the abuse of power if it takes another consensual adult to spend their money on another consensual adult? It's like the sex worker argument where people are always like, sex workers take advantage of like lonely men. Okay, are men, like are men children? Like can men not decide how to spend their money? And I know that some adults have some mental problems or some control issues, which are mental problems, some addiction issues, in which interacting might cause them to feel like they are not prepared to handle this interaction or the use of their own money. But once again, when in America, where we are arguing on whether or not women have bodily agency and autonomy, right? This conversation is always, for me, going to land on the autonomy of the adult. That adult, regardless of sickness, has the right to gamble all their money away. I just think they do, right? But it doesn't mean anything. How many times have you gone to the doctor and spent $150, $200, $300 to go see your doctor and they're like, oh, you seem fine. Take some Advil. I feel like I just got scammed. But I didn't because that's what I pay them for. I pay them to also remind me that I'm being a hypochondriac and I'm probably fine, right? Actually, I put off going to the doctors over my lupus for like almost two years because I was like, I'm fine. I'm probably aging. Then I went to the doctor because I was so sick in May and they were like, girl, it's an autoimmune disorder. And I was like, oh, thanks. That was really helpful. Do you know what I'm now hearing from my doctors? Hey girl, autoimmune disorders are crazy. They're not even going to make sense. Even if you get diagnosed negative, you're positive. Oh, and by the way, it's going to be different from, for every single person. There's not even a model I can give you to help you. So you're going to spend and continue to spend almost $2,000 a month on all your medical bills until we get to the point, probably within 12 months, of finding some sort of stable medication for you that will make sense. Great. Cool. Love it. Is that a scam? It feels like one, but it's not. It's humans being human. We don't know. You think we know. We're in the modern time. Your doctor should know. Should they? Because all my friends with autoimmune disorders have all the same stories. A lot of my friends are still undiagnosed and they know something's wrong. Doctor after doctor after doctor. So if I am scamming, every doctor's a scam. But we know they're not. So even making that statement is so silly. I hate this question because it's such a good question, but it's not. Because again, how can you, how can you determine abuse when we all define that so differently, right? Like what's a scam? I don't know. Okay, next question. Do you think it's ever okay to group people in a box? Yes, I am a woman. I am gonna box all women in this group as women. Done, love it. I get your philosophy and why you group people into those categories, but I question if that's really valid. Every, the world is built off categorization. We categorize TV shows, genres, fashion statements, music. We categorize foods. I am gluten-free. I have to eat a category of food that is gluten-free. I have to categorize, 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 categorize. What is the difference between a car and a truck? 
different categories. A truck insinuates and assumes in the mind of the, the hearer that a truck has a bed maybe and that a car doesn't, right? We just had this conversation on the Discord between like what is a car and a truck? They're different. They're both vehicles, but a car is not a truck and a truck is not a car. Ask my brother who has like his little Tacoma and I'm like, oh, what a nice car. And he's like, it's a truck. Of course it is. Sorry. My bad. It's a truck. Okay. So um, categorization is just like normal. Curly hair people, you think I watch videos on straight hair? Why would I watch the category of beauty that only covers women who don't have my hair texture? Why wouldn't I watch the category of women who who cover my hair texture, right? Um, also, I think the question goes on. If you rethought it a bit and renamed it, People would not right away think it's some kind of competition and higher levels are better. Not true. I just saw an episode of like The Cut where they were doing a dating show and this woman right away goes, hey, what's your sign? And he goes, Capricorn. And she re- she goes, uh-uh, not doing it, not dating you. She rejected him right away because he said he was a Capricorn. Maven. Izzy, love your jewelry. Appreciate you. Love the earrings. Thank you. Do you guys find each other pretty? Pretty. pretty. You yeah. are pretty. You're pretty too. <laughs> I love your skin. It's like Thank glowing. You. You're like, yeah. Love that. Radiant. Are you into each other? Is something happening here? <laughs> um, a conversation's happening. I know. I don't really know yet. Yeah. What's your sign? I'm a Capricorn. God damn it. Where's the button? Nope. Mm, nope. There's something about, I like, that's all that happens for me ever. Yeah. I'm grounded. That's all I know. Yeah, that's what you guys all say. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you reject Izzy? If you're gonna like cut me off just because of my sign, it's not someone who I necessarily want to date. That's the levels. That's the point of my work is it proves humans are incapable of engaging out within the bubbles on, uh, on in matters of nuance unless you really are cognizant of it. So here this person, really nice human, is trying to give me advice that I've heard a thousand times. Brittany, maybe you shouldn't have named it one, two, three, four, five. Maybe you should have given it cool names like Capricorn and Taurus. Right, and then what would have happened? The same thing that just happened in front of us. This girl rejected this man for a date because of his sign. You wanna tell me again that people don't create high degrees in their own minds? It is what it is. It is what it is, right? Humans are gonna human. Humans are gonna human. And it's just how it goes. All right, next question is, how do you know if you should keep diving down introspection? Can you even control when you have moments of realization? Great fucking question. I actually get to the point with some of my callers where they're like, okay, um, should I keep introspecting? And I was like, nah, you, now, you need to live now. Sometimes you can do it together. And sometimes you can't. So I have like a bunch of viewers who are like 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. And they're like falling in love and getting their jobs and graduating college. And I always tell them, be introspective. But go live your life, bitch. Go have fun. Don't try to avoid making mistakes just because you want to be introspective. Be introspective and avoid anything you don't want to do. Honor your own consent. Honor your own journey. You know what I mean? I think... I think a willingness to be open is the only thing you really need in life to have a joyful one. And it doesn't mean um, you can't have boundaries. I have very strict boundaries. Some people tell me that. Maybe you should be open to your partner cheating on you. And I'm like, nope, I'm good. I'm not going to be open to that. But I appreciate that you're open to your partner cheating on you, right? So I think um, you need to live and introspect. And sometimes you need to put one to the side. When I went on my road trips and I was introspecting, I wasn't really living, right? I didn't talk to anybody. I put everything on hold. I was working kind of, but I was mostly focused on like, what am I doing on this planet? Who am I? Why am I even here? Why do I keep wanting to die, but not wanting to die? Then I introspected. Then I lived. Now I'm living. Um, I spend my time introspecting through the day if I need to. I introspect as much as I can. I like these conversations though. So sometimes I forget what's the difference between just exploring philosophy and like introspecting. They overlap, it starts to blur. Um, When I'm really lucky, I get to live in the completely present moment, which is very overwhelming and beautiful. But it's like, it's like when you're living in the literal present moment, like in your own body, like if I just like meditated right now and was like, I'm recording a podcast and it was like, this is what I'm doing. This is like, that's what my face looks like. And this is like what this looks like. And I'm having these like relationships and like the present, I just feel really grateful, but overwhelmed that like, oh my God, life is so wonderful and amazing and vast and It's just like, it's so overwhelming. And so almost to stay sane, I have to go back to caring about YouTube drama. Because it almost like grounds you in a weird way. Because you're just like, okay, there's like, it's so overwhelming to know that we don't know what we're doing on the planet. And it's so overwhelming to go like, 8 billion people are just like, 
repeating cycles and like making mistakes and hurting each other annoyingly in some instances like the girl who's like I don't feel like I have an STI girl she could probably use some more introspection but you know girl live in her life this is a really long comment you have discussed your move away from politics and an increased interest in philosophy I get what you mean about bubbles and people living in separate spheres not interacting I also agree no individual can save the world but how can you rationalize such an individualistic approach in which we are only accountable to the people closest to us because it's realistic it is unrealistic to think that you remember when BLM was having their moments which I've marched I've cleaned up streets with BLM right when I was part of that bubble when you saw BLM doing their moment and then people in like Australia and around the world were protesting in like support of them cute very fun for social media great for clicks what did that change can anyone tell me can any black American tell me their life is better because some foreign country who has no say in what we do here helped right like America getting involved in other countries might help because we're like we're, we're, we are literally a world power and our voices are somehow ridiculously heard but at the same time does that even matter and America is also the fault for a lot of wars and, and tragedy around the world and a lot of good so like what does that even mean so the only thing I can do as a person because I'm a normal person is be good to my neighbors be good to my family be good to my partner be good to my cat because that's what I literally have control over literally like I can see it when I work out I can see my muscle definition I can see the proof when I help my brother and he's like thank you so much and I can see that throughout his life I'm like I did something I helped I don't know what's happening in fucking Australia or New Zealand or fucking Iraq where my own family is like how am I really gonna help those people right and even in my own country how am I gonna relate to somebody like in the south I okay you guys do um uh uh crawfish crawls crawf crawfish you do this thing I saw it on TikTok or Twitter or something where you take this big pot and you put a bunch of crawfish in it and then you just pour it and you eat it whatever that thing is called awesome I don't know what it's called because I'm not from the south I'm from California I don't know what it's like to live in the bubble of the south because I'm not from there it's a totally different world it's a different world the Pacific Northwest Seattle is nothing like Chicago they're fucking completely different. So again, even within my own country, who am I to tell Chicago to live the way that I want to live or California or Seattle or Texas or anyone? I don't know what your lives are like. I hope they're nice. And you're all my brothers and sisters because we're all Americans or whatever. But I don't really know you like that. The, conti the comment continues. For example, you often react to commentators of various bubbles, recently Andrew Tate, and I remember you saying he doesn't scare you because he can't do anything to you. True. But his whole goal is to get more people to think like him. Mm, not true. I don't think that's true. I think that's true, but it's not true. Because he said two different, he said yes, but no. Same with me. I'd like people to all be more open, but I, I'm not invested in it because I don't think you will be. Andrew Tate thinks people might be open even more than I do. Because I don't think people are open. I think that's the problem is that people aren't open. So I'm trying to reach open people already. I'm not trying to open people's minds. Destiny Steven is trying to open people's minds. Uh, Andrew Tate is trying to open people's minds in his way, in his way, in his way. In Brittany's world, I'm not actually trying to change your minds because I don't think that's my job. I think I should just share what I believe. And if you change your mind because of that, cool, bro. But it doesn't matter. Because like, it just like, you're not in my life. I don't interact with you. And by the way, lots of people in my family are not pro gay rights. They're not pro only fans. They're very upset about the work I do. They completely disagree with me. But they're the people who will have my back. They're the people who will visit me in prison. God forbid I ever end up there. They will be with me in the hospital. They will take care of me if I have Alzheimer's. None of you are going to do that for me. None of you are going to give a fuck about me when I'm shitting my own pants because I'm losing my memory, right? My, my lupus, my diagnosis, you're not here helping me. My family is. So yeah, I'm going to be dedicated to the people that we uplift and help each other because we know each other. We know where we're from and what we do even when we disagree. Even when my brother looks me right in the face and says, yeah, dude, I'm anti-abortion and anti-gay rights. And he's like looking at me like, what are you going to do? I know he still has my back. Even if he votes differently than for me. Does that make sense? And I know people don't believe that, but that is how the real world works. When you have real friends and real people who love you, regardless of how they vote, they've got your back. Yeah. Both things can exist at once, I promise. Um, life is tiny contradictions, right? The con uh, it continues. Overall, it seems like introspection has led you to a profound sense of isolation and individualism in which the collective does not matter. I feel like we can understand that, as that we as individuals can do very little to change wider society on our own while approaching the power that groups of people 
wait, while well, appreciating the power, sorry, that groups of people, um, uh, well, appreciating the power that groups of people bubbles can have over other people to harm or help things get be better for many. Sorry, my dyslexia is like, <laughs> okay. Sometimes that means transgressing someone's individual liberties. How can you justify your beliefs if it doesn't really matter if someone is indoctrinating others into ideology that wishes harm for many? Since you are an individual with your people, oh, since you as an individual with your people will be fine as if it is, as if that is a guarantee, it's not. I asked my parents this often. I said, okay, there's like a war, a civil war. And let's say the civil war is like pro-gay and anti-gay. What side are you on? They're like anti-gay. I'm like, okay, what side am I on? They're like pro-gay. And I'm like, okay, are you going to kill me because we're at a civil war? No, no, we're not. We would rather like not kill each other. But everyone thinks that's what it looks like. It doesn't. It just looks like a normal conversation where we all realize like, yeah, I'm not going to kill you, bro. So don't kill me. If we don't kill each other, then nothing ever happens. All the rhetoric, all of it doesn't matter. If we're not, if, if we use freedom as the base, then nothing you say will ever matter, right? Only to the psyche of the person handling it. Maybe they have trauma. Maybe the nuance of there exists. Obviously, obviously, obviously. But in terms of laws, right? Like there are places in America, if you don't pay your medical bills on time, which I never do because I, that's a lot of money, um, that you go to prison to serve your time until you pay back your medical bills. I thank God I don't live in a state like that because I just need time to pay my bills. I'll pay them. Just, I need some time, right? And then I'll pay them. It's thousands and thousands of, I'm, sp I'm hemorrhaging money right now. You know what I mean? So I, I'm not here to judge, but I am here to be worried that other people through their judgment, are creating laws that are worse for us than better for, for us. So I think people shouldn't go to jail if they can't pay their medical bills. I think people shouldn't go to jail if they do drugs. I think people shouldn't go to jail if they sell drugs. I don't think these are reasons to send people to prison at face value. I sell drugs. Okay, cool. What does that mean? Does that mean like you sell pot? Does that mean you're a hippie who grows like weed and then you sell it? Does that mean you have like coke and you give it to your friends and they give you money? Like, or are you like some conspiracy like organization cartel that's like giving drugs to 12 year olds all everyone is selling drugs in these scenarios but they're different scenarios that all have to do with selling drugs so if you have a law in the books that says selling drugs is illegal then that counts for your friend who watches spongebob and rick and morty and like smoke ro rolls one and smokes one and that counts for the cartels could you not have a balanced law in which hey individually speaking small community members should be able to do drugs everyone should be able to do drugs if you're selling them to 12 year olds, we can have a conversation about that. But it's not selling drugs that's the problem. It's selling it to 12 year olds that is the problem, right? I'm not pro selling drugs to kids. You should probably not do that. But then if, my, if I'm an older sister and I buy and I have drugs and my 19 year old sibling, nope, it's legal at 18. Uh, my, or it's usually 21 and over actually, I think weed. So let's say my 18 year old sibling's like, yo, can I hit one? Yeah, obviously, give me 10 bucks though. That weed's expensive. They give, it's not expensive, but you know what I mean? They give me 10 bucks. Am I a, did I just sell my sibling weed because they gave me $10 for my weed and it's illegal for them to smoke it because they're not 21? Because I hate that. Those, those rules are stupid. Break those rules. Those rules do not reflect reality. Those rules do not reflect real life. And so I think when we create laws, we're doing it out of an ideal, like an ideological, a, a, a utopia version of reality. Like here we are talking about um, how can we justify your beliefs that doesn't, how can you justify your beliefs that it doesn't really matter if someone is indoctrinating others into an ideology that wishes harm for many. That's every ideology. That's every belief system, except for mine. Actually, I think mine is the greatest because mine is saying don't cope, kill people, no raping, everybody chill. You know, self-defense is one thing. I get it. Like if you're getting raped, stab a motherfucker in the eye. But at the same time, I know women who have falsely accused people. I know men who have falsely accused people. I know in my past because of trauma, I've had issues with lying. I would lie to get jobs, out of jobs. I would lie to people because I was ashamed. I know I've helped people, worked with people, talked to people, loved people who are like chronic liars. And they're really scary, but they're also really troubled. And they're also really not that scary. Like Andrew Tate's not that scary to me, but also neither is Gabby Hanna. Like I watch Gabby Hanna, I'm like, okay, Gabby. I mean, I'm not afraid of her because she's on the other side of the world. But if Gabby wanted to do calls with me, I would do calls with Gabby but I wouldn't want Gabby in my house or know where I live just yet because Gabby's too unstable. But if Gabby got more stable, maybe we could have a closer relationship, right? There are callers that I talk to that I know are normal and sane and reasonable and understand consent that I would absolutely hang out with over Gabby Hanna. Fuck me. Even though Gabby Hanna is a content creator, you would think, oh, you're a YouTuber, she's a YouTuber. But we all know Gabby struggles. 
So again, I think all of us push narratives into the world that harm somebody. So you have to work within your bubbles. This is exactly my point. I think Islam is really bad for the world. I also think Catholicism is pretty bad for the world. I say pretty bad because I lived in Catholicism, so I know it's not as bad as people think it is. But I'm pretty sure a Muslim who also lived in Islam would say the same thing. So my biases is from a fear of the unknown. I have a lot of Muslim callers. I love them. But like all I hear is kind of the bad shit. I can't show my hair. I can't be like a slutty woman. I can't be gay. So I'm sitting here like this does not sound great. But those rules are the same rules you can find in Catholicism. So Catholicism is also not great. Right? But it obviously helps people. Muslims, there are a lot of Muslims in the world. There are a lot of Catholics in the world. So again, what, what, whose harm is what harm and who's hurting who? If you talk to a Catholic, this really helps them. Great. If you talk to a Muslim who really loves their religion, it helps them. Great. If you talk to someone who really feels like the levels make sense to them and it really helps them, great. But if you start turning the levels into an ideology or God forbid a religion, or my God, please don't trigger me. If you start posting like your level in your Twitter bio, I'm going to kill myself. Because it's so cringe, but it's also so human. I gave the people a, a, a structure to understand me. I gave them a language. And now if they feel they like identify with it, they're going to start doing the thing humans do. Hashtag level four. Hashtag level three. Hashtag level five. It's like, okay. That's not what I intended for my work and I hate it. But if I write a book, that's exa exactly what's going to happen. If I write a book about the levels, I will write a book about my life. But to write a book about the levels means I take it seriously enough to think people could, can identify with it. And I don't want that. I don't want your identity to be leveler first, woman second. Cringe. You know what I mean? Catholic first, dad second. Like, okay. Level three first. Like, I just, oh, cringe, cringe. I do not want this. Okay, let's go to the next one. I am so hungry. I am ready to eat. And I have calls all day after this, girls. Ugh, so much to do. Next question. Have you considered adding any more levels? Does five, uh, does five still seem like the right amount to section off people, uh, people off into? Yes. So I'm going to say this again. I'm sure you've heard me say this a lot. My levels have nothing to do except with the relationship one has with how much they know and how much they believe. So if I look at my life and I recognize that I spent a lot of my life in activist circles, trying to be a feminist, trying to be a conservative, trying to be a protester, trying to be a political person, trying to move the world towards a direction, I will openly admit that I tried to change the world into something I thought was better. That I did think that I had um, such an understanding of people that I could move them in a direction. And now I recognize that I have such an understanding of people that I know I can't move them in a direction and that I can only allow people an opportunity to move themselves in a direction utilizing my language or my energy or my YouTube or something like that. So why it ends at five is because I think my goal, my contribution to the world was to say, hey, like I think like you go through life and you introspect and you do your best, you do your best, you do your best. And then you get to a point where you're like, oh shit, I don't know what's real. I don't even know if I'm here. I don't know what what the world is. I hope I'm here. I think this makes sense. It makes sense that I be a biological creature evolved over time, which means I'm not any different than my cat, but then I have a consciousness that I can interact with. But then I'm reading a book about how plants have consciousness. So that's really interesting. And then animals obviously have consciousness because my animals pick and choose things all the time, but they also have an instinct, a biological monkey that lives inside them as we all do that like tells us what to do animalistically, right? So five is just the step of radically accepting in a very real, real way that holy fucking shit, we know nothing. And we are sitting here with such arrogance to assume we do. Anything after that is open. I don't need a level six or level seven or level eight or level nine because that's not what I, I'm, I'm talking about. A radical acceptance so powerful and deep that anything that is true is accepted to my brain. If God came down right now and she's like, hey, I'm like, oh, hey, you're real. Cool. What's up? It's like, why would that shock me? Why would that shatter anything? Five is saying that I'm so open that I know myself and I know I live in a bubble, but I also know that something could happen in which a new truth, a real truth, could just be like the way things are. And I'm like, cool. Like if, if, if it came to be known that like, hey, you're in a simulation. I'm like, okay, great. I'd like a different one. But also, okay, if that's the truth, that's the truth, right? We openly accept so many things is true in this world. And I am just saying, can you also accept that what you know could also be wrong to such an extent 
that you're willing to admit you really don't know anything. Not enough to like hold it in your hand, right? Like what's the joke on this channel is that Brittany doesn't know what a planet is? It's, it's true. If you were like, Brittany, what's a planet? I'm like, ah, it's a thing that uh, is, uh, depending on its size, a planet. It's a floating thing in space. We're on a planet right now. It's like a rock. And depending on its size, it's like a planet or not a planet. That's the best way I can explain what a planet is. Do I know what a planet is? I don't know. I think so. Maybe. You tell me. Does Brittany know what a planet is? Answer in the sections down below. I just, I don't know what that means because I don't have the knowledge. And I'm saying reading the knowledge on Wikipedia is also not knowing. I'm saying it's believing the information on Wikipedia that makes you think you know. And that's fine, but doesn't that, like, for a second make you want to go, what else am I, like, not knowing, but I think I know? Myself included. I think that all the time. Okay. Isn't holding the view that people up to the fourth level can decide to end their lives due to the cruelty of the world an unnecessary and harmful normalization of suicide? Um, it's not due to the cruelty of the world. I think that's wrong. So we're talking about suicide versus chosen death, which I now update to say that twos can choose chosen death. Anyone can, because we had a whole argument on the Discord about it and like I was wrong. So, okay, there's that. Uh, I think that uh, people have the right to live how they want and die how they want because I fundamentally believe this is like strict value. I don't think that killing yourself is bad. I think committing suicide versus a cognitive choice, a patient decision to die is most likely not right. So when I'm suicidal, it's because I am triggered and I think I should die. When I am sitting here and I am like, in my 90s and I have cancer and I'm like, okay, I'm ready to die. Do you mind giving me enough morphine so I can chill? That's like a, that's a relationship with life and death you are choosing. Your family is gathered, you're having conversations. That's a decision, right? If you're suicidal and you feel pushed into dying, but you don't want to die, that is not choosing to die. That is being forced to die through your own narrative or through the narrative of your bubble. That's different. So I don't think it's good to commit suicide. I think it's fine to be a grown up and to make a decision about ending your life, which is your right, because I believe in bodily autonomy. I would never, 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 never tell anyone what to do with their bodies, especially when it comes to life and death. That is not my business. And the fact that other people think, think it's theirs is so fucking narcissistic to me. Next question, do you ever come across people that are outliers in your system? Like they don't, they just don't fit neatly into any of your levels or bubbles or is it everyone mostly, everyone most, wait, everyone mostly one level and one bubble and easily identifiable, easily identifiable, identifiable, identifiable as that. Um, yeah, I do meet really unique people sometimes. They will show up and we'll do a call and I'm like, man, I can't tell what your level is. Okay, it's not important. I have to get to know you more. I have to understand the context of your being, right? Because people lie. So people lied to me. You understand people do lie to me, right? Like that is a thing that definitely happens, which is why when we do calls, I make people do video call because people lie with their voices and I want to see their bodily like movements. And I'm like, oh, you just did this thing. What do you think that means? But I, I do meet people all the time who don't fit into my, who, who don't fit into my levels very clearly. They always fit into bubbles very clearly. The levels sort of kind of, um, and then eventually, yeah, it's like pretty clear, right? Like all fives look differently and some fives can look like twos and some fives can look like ones and some five. So it's like, oh, I have to get to know you, which is why ultimately when I level people, I don't know. It's like, okay, but I do have to get to know you. Like I don't actually know your level, right? And again, they could be lying to me, which people do. Uh, question, why don't you write down your philosophy? Why keep it in your head and not centralized? Because of what I said earlier, um, then it is something that I'm saying to the world, I take seriously enough that you should think about it. And I'm saying, no, I don't want that. I don't want to be a thought leader. I don't want to be like Deepak Chopra or whatever. I don't want to be Oprah. I don't want to be like Glenn Beck. I don't want to be somebody who's like, everyone should listen to me. Listen to me if you want. But like, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't want to be your teacher. I just want to be another person like you. I just have done something and gone through something in my life that because it's an accomplishment, people think that makes me a teacher. It just makes me a person who did something. And because I'm not a teacher and I am a student of the world, I am proof that students can learn and excel and, and be seen as the teacher even when they don't want to be. Like I don't feel like a teacher. I just feel like a girl who figured out something and shared it. And people are like, cool. And I'm like, great. Putting me on a pedestal is like what you're doing. It's not what I'm doing, right? Uh, next question. 
It's been a while since I watched any 101 on the levels. It, uh, it is levels of introspection, right? Not the value of an individual based on a level. True. But the amount of introspection they've experienced and or strive for. Exact. Fuck, that's fire. Okay, hold on. Um, it is a levels of introspection, right? Not the value of an individual based on a level, but the amount of introspection they've experienced and or strive for. Yes. Because sometimes I disagree with things you say. I watch you mostly for discussions surrounding BDSM, sexuality, mental health, specifically personality disorders. The actual levels are not as important as the work it takes to become as introspective as a level four or five. Yes, the tools you provide and your opinions about people who are less introspective allow me to reflect on my own actions and mental health. F fuck yes. Okay. As a casual viewer who found you last year, I think, um, I think they see you as far more extreme than you really are because that's what the internet breeds and they do not live and they do not have lives offline. Holy fuck, I feel so seen. Oh my god, I'm gonna cry. Woo! Okay, fair. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes. I don't know if this hurts your ears or not, but this is my little fay bell from my high priestess box this month. It's like, oh, the Catholic in me. Oh. It's like, yes, this comment. The levels is not meant to, like, cast value on you. It's meant to give you a tool to think about, hey, have I thought about this long enough, hard enough, or deep enough? Oh, I love that. Oh, I don't even have to say anything about that because you just said it all. You should you should be me. You should take my job over and just do my job for me. Um, comment says, would you consider rebranding re the levels? I believe a source of confusion from, uh, from some stems from the hierarchical nature of the levels and numerical value order. Excuse me. I think if they were called something without an inherent implied value structure like zones, areas, area, LOL, verveki, <laughs> section, region, your ideas could be received more clarity. Obviously not. I gave the example of the the astrology example like, oh, I wouldn't date a Capricorn. There are going to be people who are just gonna be like, I'm not going to date your section or your zone or your areas like uh, arenas. Sorry. It's like um, it's like, uh, you know, you know what I mean? Like it's like people are just going to like find the word or find even Catholics do. You know, there's a higher. Do y'all know there's a hierarchy in Catholicism? There are levels to heaven in Catholicism, according to like Anne Catherine Emmerich and other people. Like there are like, oh no, 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 no. St. Teresa, I think, of Avila did the levels. But like there are hierarchies even in heaven. So when you die, we're apparently not even going all to the same heaven. There's like rooms. There's VIP rooms in heaven. And I'm like, you know what? I'm over this. Everyone does it. Everyone does it. Everyone loves hierarchies. Everyone wants to be better than everyone else. And I'm saying my level system is trying to say that we're not really better Though I think level ones are quite a struggle. But again, if Jerry is a level one from Rick and Morty, and I think he is, he's still lovable and I love him. I meet people like that all the time. You know, they're lovable but kind of useless. Okay. Can you talk more about if your personal experience in therapy influenced or did not influence your observation level system? Um, I mean, everything influenced it, right? So um, my co-author has no diagnosable mental illnesses, is not borderline, and he and I did it together. So my language that I use to describe my life is definitely borderline language because DPD, DBT definitely helped me organize my life. Um, but the way he would talk about it would be different. So again, you're just seeing it from my language perspective and my language is limited and my vocabulary is limited and DBT language really helps me communicate the levels to people. Radical acceptance, I'm open but I have boundaries, you know, all these things, they're all DBT influenced. Um, as a viewer for about a year, I remember you would do com when you would do conversations for $1 or $5. When was that? I don't have any memory of this. Can you talk more about the price jump bump to $250? That is not true. I never did this. When did I ever have conversations with people for $1 or $5? I don't know what this is referring to. Do you mean the Snapchat, which is still available? Or do you mean the Discord, which is $10? Or do you mean the $1 for Patreon, which does not give you access to my DMs? Like what... I mean, you can DM me, but like, I'm not going to answer every DM. Some people will pay a dollar on Patreon and send me like 10 pages on a DM and be like, can you help me? Um, but I never did conversations for a dollar or five dollars. So I don't know what that's referring to. Um, patrons still kind of have conversations with me. I'm on my Discord where people can talk to me, but you're not guaranteed my like one-on-one -on -one time there. Like I'm in group chat with everybody. So I'm not really sure what you're referring to. Can you talk more about the price jump to 250? Yes, uh, it was worth my time. The demand on my time is insane. I have like a 300 person waiting list right now. So like the only reason I have a waiting list too is all those people don't want to sign up for Patreon because they're, they don't like the way Patreon runs their like website. So everyone on the waiting list is just people who aren't getting on Patreon. But I think there might be one or two spots right now for calls this month, but I don't, I don't actually know because they're filling up really fast. 
But um, I just do it because it's my time, like the demand on my time, right? Uh, everything else is free that I do, right? YouTube is totally free. My podcasts are free. My collabs are free. The only thing I charge for is the Patreon stuff, which helps fund the channel. And my personal time is the most expensive part of it, right? So if you want to, if you want to access to me, you just have to pay ten dollars. Come onto the Discord and talk to me. But you can't trauma dump on anyone, and it can't be you like taking up time for three hours. Like maybe sometimes if you are interesting enough about philosophy or something, but not if you come to the. Di- I had one girl sign up for the Discord and be like, "Brittany, I'm here. I demand your time." And I'm like, "Bitch!" Like people do that. People definitely show up to my Discord and they're like, "I demand your uh, your attention." Girl, I'd rather be masturbating or smoking. Like, chill. Edibling. Edibling. Um, uh, they continue to say, I didn't know uh, that happened until it was recently brought up. It probably was for the editor. But it'd be nice for you to talk about the money and the argument for you being a cult leader. Oh, that too. I'm paying Len, my editor, and I'm trying to pay him a fair wage. How am I going to pay Len, like, three to four grand a month if I'm not making at least 10 to 15 grand a month? right? Like I have to be making because I still take care of my family members. I'm paying my brother's rent right now. Like I'm helping people as it is. I can't, you know what I'm saying? Like I even pay my discord mods. Like I, money, life takes money. So yeah, if y'all want me to run this channel and have an editor and do more calls, I need to compensate him for his time. And he's got to pay tax on that money. Everything's done legally, which costs me money. Like, do you you get what I'm saying? It's a lot of adulting that goes into running this and making it possible. Uh, Okay. And the talk about evolution of these conversations, how they've logistically changed and when they started, what it looks like now. I don't know if this is helpful or something you'd want to do, but going through the characteristics of a cult, I don't know how you would be received though. I mean, just watch a documentary on cults. Obviously, I'm not running one. Cults are very specific. And um, obviously I'm not running one, but I love cult documentaries. I think they're so interesting. Um, Okay, next question. Do you think there's a chance you're not a five? Who do you see as wiser than you? Okay, five is not about wisdom. Say it with me. Five is not about wisdom. I am a Brittany who though is wise is not in any way the wise person I want to be. I think wisdom comes with age and you have to earn wisdom. And when I am old, I hope I am wise. I am not claiming to be a wise person. I am not making that claim that fives are automatically wise people. It has nothing to do with wisdom. So when you say, who do you think is wiser than you? Probably everybody else. And also tons of twos. Tons of twos are incredibly more wise than me. Wisdom has nothing to do with introspection. But if your introspection introspection and your wisdom... Um, interact they can have a much healthier and better relationship to facilitate one or the other so I think you can be again like it, wisdom and introspection are n- they're like different right so I am not claiming to be the most wise person on the planet that is not my claim I do not think fives are the most wise that is not my claim that is not my claim okay great question <laughs> okay not this this is a bonus question that's at the end we'll do the bonus questions at the end because those are funny Oh my God, stop. Oh, did I reach the, oh, I reached the end. Oh, we are at the end. Yay. Those are the questions. Oh, wow. Okay, great. So uh, a couple of you asked me, Destiny OF collab, when? Um, uh, who knows? <laughs> no, I just, I, um, I don't know if you guys know this. I am in a relationship and I am monogamous. So um, I will never touch anyone ever again. <sighs> okay, now that that's all over, now that the, the fun is over, now that we can joke about Destiny and I doing an OF collab, that will never happen. Because I'm, I'm telling you, ladies, I am committed. Um, I want to thank you for your questions. I really hope my OBS has been recording this whole time. <laughs> I'm so worried. Uh, it says that it has, but you know technology. I really like doing this. I feel much better too. Like as a Brittany, I just, I feel relieved, I think. I think I was holding on to all that stress and uh, internalizing like all these bad comments. And I know I like go to my friends and I cry about it. But I think it was nice to just like be here with you guys and to talk about it. Um, I really like my community and my community is what makes it sane. If you guys as community members maintain consent as the basis of your philosophies or your value systems, then we will together hopefully have appropriate relationships. But if you start objectifying me or putting me on a pedestal or assuming I'm someone I'm not, then it's not going to work out for either of us. And I'm going to not do that to you. I don't want to generalize you. I don't want to assume the worst of you, but I... I want to be able to just like exist as a Britney and make friends or hang out or be an internet person. And um, I hope along the way we all get better. Like, yes, I do want to like pull you guys up with me as I move on and so on and so forth. 
But hopefully, I hope you guys all like have families and jobs and live your life and travel and worry less and less and less about what some YouTuber on the internet thinks about you because it doesn't matter. All right, I guess that's all. I guess that's it. Oh my gosh, okay, I'm gonna go. Thanks for being here. I hope you have a great day and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye. Hey guys, before I go, obviously, um, High Priestess. Just a reminder, you guys can get your boxes. I really recommend them. They are amazing. They are high end. They are beautiful. Like this tea is a local from Australia. They have like, I love bells. Oh, I love bells. The candles are my favorite. They're all handmade. There's even a hand twi twisted, I think you call it, wand. Look at this. If you guys like, like wands, oh my God, I love it. There's crystals and booklets and cards. Like, I don't know if you guys know this actually, cause I'm not woo woo. Like I don't believe in magic or astrology or like tarot, but I do think that tarot is like a really helpful tool. There's these cards that have been coming in all my boxes, which I fucking love. They all come differently in different ways, but this month's probably has the best art. So in terms of art, this is the best box I've gotten so far. Can you guys see these? They're like really cute. They're like, really sturdy I want to show you guys so like this one says pixie make time for fun and childlike wander wonder 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 look at this picture like cute art right okay look look at this art like it's so beautiful I don't know if you guys can see it because it's focusing on my face don't focus on my face focus on the uh, I'll send pictures to Instagram um meditate on rebirth and reawakening I love it so like you sit here you pull your card okay hold on let's do it let's just do it together fuck it let's do it together let's think of an intention um how about we do an intention in relation to the cult stuff so how do I maintain transparency honesty and honor how do I make sure oh not how I just want that to be the thought. How do I honor my values and honor my place on the planet without harming people or at least minimizing the harm? Okay, so those are the themes in my head. Lady of the Lake. <laughs> Lady of the Lake. It says, you are ready to receive wisdom. Be open to it. Again, I'm not woo-woo, but boo-boos. We just ended on a wisdom question. And I pulled a wisdom question in relation to how do I communicate with masses of people and try to be transparent and honest about it. Okay. You are ready to receive wisdom. Be open to it. I am open to it. Someone, uh, someone come into my life and give it to me <laughs> so I can earn it. This is why I love, even though I'm not like a witch-identified person, I like that, I'm, that I am welcomed in communities and bubbles that express and interact with each other in such a different way than I do in mine. But I feel welcomed and seen and heard and the language might be uncomfortable for some people, but it makes me feel like I have a home outside of my own. So High Priestess, always a blessing to work with them. I love Leela, I love working with this company. I love working with her. I love that I can cry to her about the mean things Mr. Girl says to me and she's like, I get it. <laughs> it's really nice. All right, guys, I'm going to talk to you soon. I'll be uh, back next week. The podcasts are back. I'll let you know if I feel really sick because of the lupus or for some reason. But I think I feel okay. I mean, I'm like dying right now. I'm like sweating and my body is like upset and bruised everywhere because it's just like, <gasps> I'd, like if it has a hard time like being awake for too long. And so it's I'm going to go take a nap and then I'm going to get into calls. But we are back. We are doing it. This is, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Okay, talk to you guys soon. Bye. So my head in real life while I'm bed My belly's being fed and I'm okay I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah Sick of reaching out for the truth and living life as a fool.